Very welcome here in the dog section at the Royal Melbourne, our 2023 uh, show. Today is General Specials Day, our favourite day of the year. Of course, we've judged many thousands of dogs and it's all about today. Our final awards will be given out, but we have seven groups to judge first. So please make welcome to the ring, accompanied by our chairman, Gail Wilcock, Gerardo Pellucci, all the way from Argentina. Please make him welcome. And we commence with the judging of the utility group. So now all best of breed winners from eight days of judging are about to enter the ring from the utility group. The utility of group, our group number six, many of our giant breeds, mastiffs, dogs of substance, powerful examples of the breed, of their breed, sorry. So uh, we'll enjoy watching our utility group in a few moments time. At this time, we do wish to acknowledge some of our, our sponsors, LifeWise Pet Nutrition, who have been outstanding in their um, donations and their um, food products for our best of breed winners. We do thank uh, Pet Cover. They've also been generous in their sponsorship. We also wish to acknowledge um, so many uh, benefactors that have contributed and been generous to our, um, our show. Of course, Melbourne Royal is such a prestigious show. 2,700 dogs have been judged over eight days by four outstanding judges. So it's wonderful to have them. All right, it seems our best of breed winners are about to enter the ring. We make welcome our best of breed winners from the utility group. Alaskan Malamute, exhibit number 1688. The Alaskan Malamute, in northwestern Alaska, a tribe of Inuit called the Malamutes, developed a breed of dog for hauling heavy sleds in harsh weather and assisting with hunting. This is a large, strong, solid dog with distinctive white markings. The Alaskan Malamute has incredibly high energy level and needs to be exercised every day. They are athletic and playful, very affectionate and love everyone. The Alaskan Malamute. Bernese Mountain Dog, exhibit number 1716. From Switzerland, Bernese Mountain Dogs accompanied the Alpine herders and dairymen in the Swiss Alps. They were general farm dogs, but were also used to pull carts. They are large, heavy dogs with a distinctive tri-coloured coat, black with white chest and rust-coloured markings. The Bernese have calm temperaments and like to be with their family. Boxer, exhibit 1756. 
The Boxer is a strong, boisterous, active dog with a very positive personality. It is a very serviceable and utilitarian breed. The Boxer is always ready to play, even in old age. He enjoys as much exercise as you care to give him. Boxers can be very boisterous if left unchecked, particularly as youngsters, and obedience training is recommended. Apart from that, the box is easy to care for coat and cleanliness around the house, coupled with his manageable size and the fact that he is not a noisy dog, make him a welcome addition to any household. He is usually fond of children, is highly intelligent and very tractable. The boxer. Bull Mastiff exhibit. 1779. The Bull Mastiff was bred to assist English wardens, gamekeepers, to, ex to guard estates in the 19th century. The Bull Mastiff are strong, powerful, sensitive dogs and are natural guardians of their home. Activities they can really enjoy are obedience, agility, tracking and carting. They can weigh between 40 and 60 kilograms. Doberman, exhibit number 1796. The Doberman is well known as an intelligent, alert and loyal companion dog. They were developed in Germany and were first used as a guard dog for tax collectors. They were the official war dog in World War II and were once commonly used as guard dogs or police dogs. Today they are known for a much more even and good-natured temperament, extreme loyalty, high intelligence and great trainability. They are muscular and elegant and carry themselves proudly. The Doberman. Dog de Bordeaux, exhibit number 1821. The Dog de Bordeaux is a breed that has been utilised in many different forms, from using their brawn to pull carts or heavy, haul heavy objects, to guarding flocks and used to protect castles of the European elite. The Dog de Bordeaux is a well-balanced, muscular and large dog with a powerful build. They are a placid breed, but they can be very protective and loyal to their family. Dog de Bordeaux. Leonberger, exhibit one eight two nine. The Leonberger was originally bred as a symbolic dog that would mimic the lion in the town crest. The breed has a generous double coat and is a large, muscular and elegant dog with balanced body type, medium temperament and dramatic presence. Leonbergers are good with children, family pets and other dogs. Socialisation and thorough obedience training are extremely important with any giant breed. The Leonberger. Neapolitan Mastiff, exhibit 1845. The Neapolitan Mastiff is often used as a guard and defender of their family and home. They are known to sneak up on intruders rather than alerting them of his presence. Neapolitans were also trained to bait bulls, bears and jaguars. 
The Neapolitan Mastiffs are an intelligent breed and are known to be intelligent thinkers. The breed is known as gentle giants. The Neapolitan Mastiff. Newfoundland Exhibit 1859. Newfoundlands were originally bred and used as a working dog for fishermen in the Dominion of Newfoundland. They are known for their giant size, tremendous strength, calm dispositions and loyalty. Newfoundland dogs excel at water rescue and life saving because of their muscular build, thick double coat, webbed feet and innate swimming abilities. The Newfoundland. Pyrenean Mountain Dog, Exhibit 1886. The Pyrenean Mountain Dog originated in the Pyrenees Mountains that separate France from Spain, where it has been used for centuries as a guard and sheep herding dog. The Pyrenean is placid, self-confident and protective of its family. Pyrenees fit most situations, requiring a reasonably sized backyard and a daily game or walk. The Pyrenean Mountain Dog. Russian Black Terrier, Exhibit 1901. The Russian Black Terrier was developed to serve as guard dog and police dog. The Russian bacteria has a double coat with a coarse outer guard hair over a soft un undercoat which is hard and dense. The Russian black terrier, because of its breeding as a working dog, has a very strong work ethic and needs a job to do in order to be happy. They are confident, calm, highly intelligent, brave and loyal. <laughs> Russian black terrier. Samoid, Exhibit 1960. The nomadic reindeer herders bred the Samoid to help with the herding and to pull sleds when they moved. Samoids are excellent companions, especially for small children or even other dogs, and they remain playful into old age. When Samoids become bored, they may uh, begin to dig. Samoid. Schnauzer, Exhibit 1968. The Schnauzer originated in Germany in the 15th and 16th centuries. The term comes from the German word for moustache because of the dog's distinctively bearded snout. The Schnauzer comes in three sizes. This is the standard. Schnauzer. Schnauzer Giant, Exhibit 1984. The Schnauzer is protective and energetic and will alert members of the household to any potential danger. Schnauzer Giant. Schnauzer Miniature, Exhibit 2010. The Schnauzer, ever alert, makes an excellent watchdog, 
although its watchful nature can lead to persistent barking. Schnauzer Miniature. Shiba Inu Exhibit 2012. The Shiba Inu is the smallest and most distinctive of the Spitz breeds from Japan. Originally, the Shiba Inu was bred to hunt and flush small game, such as birds and rabbits. They are a small, agile dog which cope very well with mountainous terrain. They generally go out of their way to keep their coats clean, often can be seen licking their paws and legs, much like a cat yet they thoroughly enjoy swimming and playing in puddles. Shiba Inu. Shikoku exhibit 1699. A relatively rare breed in this country, the Shikoku is a Japanese breed and belongs to the Spitz family. A medium-sized, typically brave but wary breed, their movement should be agile and springy, intelligent and a quick learner, but could be challenging and requires patience to train. The Shikoku. Siberian Husky. 2053. The Siberian Husky is a working dog that originated in northeastern Siberia. They would pull heavy loads long distances through difficult conditions. They are a medium sized, dense coated dog. Huskies are an active, energetic, and resilient breed whose ancestors came from the extremely cold and harsh environment of the Siberian Arctic. The Siberian Husky. St. Bernard Exhibit 2064. The St. Bernard is a working dog from the Italian and Swiss Alps, originally bred for rescue. The breed has become famous through tales of alpine rescues as well as for its enormous size. The St. Bernard is a loyal and affectionate breed. They would prefer to be with their family and are relatively inactive indoors and a small yard is sufficient. The Saint Bernard. Tibetan Mastiff exhibit 2075. The Tibetan Mastiff was bred in Tibet and used as a guardian of herds, flocks, tents, villages, monasteries and palaces. It is natural for the Tibetan Mastiff to want to guard and protect its family and territory. Most of them will be very gentle, patient and loving with people and the children they know. It is a very calm, thoughtful and dignified breed. The Tibetan Mastiff. Okay. So, our judge today, Mr. Pellucci, has had a chance to look at all of these best of breed winners from the utility group. As we said, the utility group, many of the large, powerful breeds. We have mastiffs, dogs from the mountainous regions, dogs from Arctic areas. But such an impressive group of dogs, strength and power. So what's going to happen now? We're going to select eight. A round of applause, yes, for these best of breed winners. So our judge seems to have made his decision. We will select eight, and they will be our eight finalists. And then we would whittle it down to four and be placed from four, three, two, one. Of course, best in group or group first returns later in the day to compete for best in show. We have seven groups to be judged today. This is the first group, the utility group. And so...
eight finalists for a start. But all of these dogs are winners. Why? Because they have won best of breed throughout the eight days of judging. So well over 2,000 dogs have been adjudicated and assessed by four outstanding judges. It's really exciting that they've all returned here for best uh, in group judging and hopefully we'll see what happens at the end of the day with best in show. Of course this day is an incredible day. It is a celebration of pedigree pure bred dogs. Dogs that are bred for a purpose, bred for health, bred for a function. They are bred for consistency and these breeders should be incredibly proud of these wonderful examples of the breed that we see here in the utility group today. That's it. Give these breeders a round of applause. We will call them out in alphabetical order, so no particular order as such. Here we go. Let's bring out 1688, the Alaskan Malamute. Bring out 1716, the Bernese Mountain Dog. 1756, the Boxer. Let's bring out 1796, the Doberman. 1960, the Samoid. Bring out 2010, the Miniature Schnauzer. Let's bring out 2053, the Siberian Husky. And finally, rounding out the top eight, 2064, the St. Bernard. However, will you please give our retiring best of breed a round of applause as they retire from competition? So, each of these eight will have a chance to move around to impress our judge before we make our placements in this, the utility group, the first group to be judged here at the Royal Melbourne Show. I think you should uh, encourage them, the Alaskan Malamute, the Bernese Mountain Dog, the Boxer, the Doberman. The Samoid, the Miniature Schnauzer, come on keep your applause going for the Siberian Husky, and finally the Saint Bernard. So, it seems that Mr. Pellucci's made his decision, quickly made his way over to the book to be marked. And we're going to find out in just a few moments' time who will take out first, second, third and fourth in the utility group. As we said, generally dogs of, that are fairly large in stature, powerful dogs, dogs that are custodians and guardians and escort dogs bred to work with military and armies. Fantastic dogs. Seems the book has been marked. Not long to go. So we do thank our sponsors, LifeWise Pet Nutrition, for their generous donations at this year's show. Plush Puppy as well, we need to acknowledge them. And also Pet Cover. All right, are you ready? Let's see who's going to take out these uh, positions in the utility group. Fourth in group. Let's bring out 1796, the Doberman. Best in utility group fourth receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Nine kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Okay, third in the group. Let's bring out 1716, the Bernese Mountain Dog. Yeah. 
Best in Utility Group 3rd receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, 9 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Okay, two spots remain. Second in the group today, let's bring out 1688, the Alaskan Malamute. Best in Utility Group 2nd receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, the 9 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. So, going on to represent the Utility Group for Best in Show later this afternoon, let's bring out exhibit number 1960, the Samoid. Best in Utility Group. This is a trophy in memory of Eric Singer, donated by Ms D Parker, 18 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia, flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths, and a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Thank you. Give a hand to the boxer, to the miniature schnauzer, to the Siberian Husky and the Saint as they retire from competition. All right, a lap of honour. Let's take them round. A round of applause for our group winners from the utility group this year. So congratulations. But we haven't finished yet. Our best puppy of breeds from the utility group are about to make their way into the ring and will compete for best puppy in the utility group. It's wonderful that so many people are joining us. If you're just wandering by, please come and spend some time in the dog pavilion, in the dog section at this year's Royal Melbourne Show. As we said, a wonderful celebration of pedigree purebred dogs. I know that many of you are watching on the live stream all over the world. You are also very, well, are very welcome at this year's show. So sit back, relax and enjoy the puppies from the utility group. Alaskan Malamute Exhibit 1691. Bernie's Mountain Dog, Exhibit 1700.
Bernie's Mountain Dog. Boxer, Exhibit 1764. Boxer. Bull Mastiff, exhibit 1785. Bull Mastiff. Doberman, Exhibit 1798. The Doberman. Dog de Bordeaux, Exhibit 1811. Dog de Bordeaux. Leonberger, Exhibit 1823. Leonberger. Neapolitan Mastiff, Exhibit 1845. Neapolitan Mastiff. Newfoundland Exhibit 1861. Newfoundland, Pyrenean Mountain Dog, Exhibit 1886.
Pyrenean Mountain Dog. Russian Black Terrier, Exhibit 1895. Russian Black Terrier. Samoid Exhibit Samoid. Schnauzer Giant, Exhibit 1984. Schnauzer Giant. Schnauzer Miniature, Exhibit 1988. Schnauzer Miniature. Shiba Inu, Exhibit 2024. Shiba Inu. Siberian Husky, Exhibit 2045. Siberian Husky. St. Bernard Exhibit 2061. St. Bernard. Okay. So, Mr. Pellucci has had a chance to look at these puppies. A puppy is aged somewhere between 6 and 12 months of age. 
so the teenagers of dogdom. And we're going to whittle it down to four, four finalists. But just uh, one dog will go through as best puppy in the group. So the utility group, many of the giants of dogdom are here. Often dogs that are powerful and strong, built to be uh, useful as custodians of property, guardians of people. Many work in mountainous regions. We have many of our molosser or mastiff breeds. All right, let's bring out our top four finalists. First up, 1700 is the Bernese Mountain Dog. Let's bring out 1798, the Doberman. 1910, the Samoyed. And rounding out the top four, let's bring out 2045, the Siberian Husky. Would you please give a round of applause to our, our retiring puppy of breed winners from the utility group. Congratulations for making it this, uh, this far and being wonderful representatives of your breed. So each of these puppies has a chance to move around to make a great impression on our judge before we award best puppy in the utility group. Give them a round of applause. Encourage them on. The Bernese Mountain Dog. The Doberman. The Samoid. And the Siberian Husky. So who will go on to represent the utility group for best puppy in show? Unfortunately, it can only be one. But give them a round of applause again before we make our announcement. But for uh, beautiful representatives of, the, of their breed, all right. Representing the utility group for best puppy in show, 1700, the Bernese Mountain Dog. The best puppy in the utility group receives a trophy in memory of Kate White, donated by Brett White, a trophy in rosette presented by Melbourne Royal, and flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths. A round of applause for the Doberman, the Samoyed and the Siberian as they retire from competition. But would you please put your hands together for best puppy in the utility group? It's the Bernese Mountain Dog. The Bernese returns later in the day to compete for best puppy in show. And also, a round of applause. Mr Pellucci, thank you for judging the utility group here today. Next up is our working dog group. We'll bring out, we'll change the board. Our working dog best of breed winners will enter the ring in a few moments' time. But we do wish to thank uh, our major sponsors, Pet Cover, Petwise. Fantastic. Thank you for your sponsorship and your prizes and donations of food. We also um, thank Plush Puppy for their generous generosity too at this year's show. The best schnauzer in the utility group was a miniature schnauzer, Exhibit 2010. The best schnauzer of any variety received a rosette in memory of Jack and Joan Frost, High Sands, and Diane Lily Dirick, donated by Isabel Mundy. Okay, seems we're almost ready to go with our working group. Our working group, of course, are breeds that are bred to be custodians of flocks. Please make welcome the Deputy Chair, Judy Oliver, as she accompanies our judge today, Dr George Tesic, all the way from Hungary, who will judge our working dog group. You are very welcome. 
So wonderful that you're watching from the stands and many, many people, of course, from their armchairs at home on our live stream, enjoyed the judging of the Working Dog Group. The Working Dog Group, of course, breeds that are bred to work with flocks, cattle, sheep, goat, etc. from the four corners of the world in all shapes and sizes. These are our best of breed winners from the Working Dog Group. The Australian Cattle Dog, exhibit number 1263. A native Australian breed is a herding dog originally developed for driving cattle over long distances across rough terrain. <clears throat> They're a medium sized, short coated dog that comes in two main colour forms either brown or black hair, distributed evenly through a white coat, which gives the appearance of a red or a blue dog, giving them a nickname Red Healer or Blue Healer. Cattle dogs have great stamina and endurance, are a picture of strength with intense, watchful eyes. They excel in agility, fly ball, herding and frisbee competition. The Australian Cattle Dog. The Australian Kelpie, exhibit number 1289. The Kelpie's an Australian sheepdog, successful at mustering and droving with little or no command guidance. Medium sized dogs and come in a variety of colours. Kelpies have been exported throughout the world and are used to master livestock, primarily sheep, cattle, and goats. The Australian Kelpie. The Australian Shepherd, <coughs> exhibit number 1340, 
Australian Shepherd is a breed of herding dog. It was de developed on ranches in the Western United States. Called an Aussie, they acquired their name because some of these dogs were used to herd Australian sheep. The Australian Shepherd. The Australian <coughs> Stumpy Tail Cattle Dog, exhibit number 1345. The Stumpy Tail Cattle Dog is a bobtail, medium sized breed of dog. The Australian Stumpy Tail Cattle Dog was developed in Australia to herd cattle and descends from crosses between European herding dogs and the Australian dingo. It's a rugged dog with pricked ears and long legs. The Australian Stumpy Tail Cattle Dog. The Bearded Collie Exhibit 1348. The Bearded Collie, or Beardy, is a herding breed of dog once used primarily by Scottish Shepherds to herd sheep and cattle. For high energy level and require weekly brushing to keep their coats met free. They are popular family pet, pets and excel at agility trials. The Bearded Collie. The Belgium Shepherd Dog, Gronendale, exhibit number 1359. The Gronendale is a medium sized, hard working, square proportion breed of dog belonging to the sheep dog family originating in Brussels. Recognised by its distinctive black coat and is one of the four registered Belgium sheepdogs. They're intelligent, active, loyal and quietly affectionate. The Belgium Shepherd Dog, Gronendale. Now the Belgium Shepherd Dog, Traveran, exhibit number 1366. Javerin is a member of the Belgium Shepherd Dog family, named after a village in Belgium. It's recognised by its thick double coat, generally mahogany with varying degrees of black overlay. The Belgium Shepherd Dog, Javerin. The Border Collie, Exhibit 1397. Border Collie is a herding dog breed, de breed developed in the Anglers, Scottish border region for herding livestock, especially sheep. Working Border Collies can take direction by voice and by whistle at long distances when herding. It's an intelligent breed and requires considerable daily physical exercise and mental stimulation. The Border Collie. The Briard Exhibit 1431. The Briard originating in France and in fact Napoleon owned a Briard. They were originally bred for herding and to guard flocks of sheep and have been the official dog of the French army. 
They are somewhat rare today because so many were lost in World War I. Briads would carry supplies to the front line and served as sentry dogs. The Briad. The Collie Ruff, Exhibit 1437. The Collie originated in the 1800s as a herding dog in Scotland. They are famous as the Lassie dog from movies and books. They have a very characteristic hedge, head which resembles a blunt wedge. They need consistent care and grooming to keep their beautiful coat in good condition. The Collie Ruff. The Collie Smooth, Exhibit 1459. The Collie Smooth is descended from a population of sh shepherd's dogs brought to Scotland by the Romans around the 5th century. Queen Victoria made the dogs fashionable and they became family pets and show dogs. They have a long muzzle, flat skull and semi-erect ears and an alert and vocal dog, which makes them a good watch dog. The Collie Smooth. <laughs> the Finnish Lapin, Exhibit 1476. The Finnish Lapin was traditionally bred for herding reindeer. It has a double coat with a soft, fluffy undercoat and a longer, coarse top coat. The Finnish Lapin is an excellent, active breed. The Finnish Lapin can complete in agility, carting, obedience, fly ball, tracking, and herding. The Finnish Lapin. The German Shepherd Dog, Exhibit 1497. German Shepherd is a working dog developed originally for herding and guarding sheep. Because of its strength, intelligence, and abilities in obedience training, is often employed. Oh dear. It's often employed in police and military roles around the world. It's marked by a willingness to learn and an eagerness to have a purpose. They're curious, which makes them excellent guard dogs and suitable for search missions. They can become overprotective of their family and territory, especially if not socialised correctly. The German Shepherd Dog. The German Shepherd Dog Long Stock Coat Exhibit 1525. German Shepherd Dog Long Stock Coat. <laughs> the Marema Sheep Dog. Exhibit 1527. 
The Maruba Sheepdog is a livestock guardian dog. They're used by Italian shepherds to protect sheep from wolves. It is of solid, muscular build with a thick white coat. Centuries of breeding the dogs to be gentle with lambs but fiercely protective of their flock has created a breed that will bond to families and show a calm and intelligent disposition. The Maremma Sheepdog. The miniature Australian Shepherd, Exhibit 1495, originated in the USA in the 1980s from small Australian Shepherds that worked on the rodeo circuit. Resembling an Australian Shepherd in miniature, these dogs were selectively bred to further reduce their size and have now become popular as the companion dog due to their active, friendly and loyal nature. The miniature American Shepherd. The Norwegian Bullhund, Exhibit 1531. Belonging to the Spitz family of dogs, the Norwegian Bullhund was used as an all-purpose farm and herding dog in his native Norway. With a fearless, brave and energetic temperament, he was also a watchdog and nanny dog. A lightly built dog with a smooth lying coat, he has the typical spits of red pointed ears and curled tail over the back. The Norwegian Bullhund. The Old English Sheepdog, Exhibit 1538. The Old English is a large breed of dog which was developed in England from early herding types of dog. It is immediately recognisable by its long, thick, shaggy grey and white coat with fur covering their face and eyes. Their distinctive shaggy grey coat needs a degree of commitment to keep it in good condition. The Old English Sheepdog has a clownish energy and may try to herd people or other objects. The Old English Sheepdog. The Polish Lowland Sheepdog, Exhibit 1539. Polish Lowland Sheepdog is descended from the herding dogs from Poland. They were first seen around the 13th century. They are a muscular, thick-coated dog and are stable and self-confident. They have natural herding instincts and are very good at obedience, fly ball and training. The Polish Lowland Sheepdog. The Pooley, Exhibit 1546. Pooley is a medium-sized breed of Hungarian breeding and livestock guarding dog known for its long corded coat. The tight curls of the coat, similar to dreadlocks, make it virtually waterproof. They are loyal to their owners and weary of strangers. They're highly active and keep a playful, puppy-like behaviour their entire life. The Shetland Sheepdog, Exhibit 1577. The Shetland Sheepdog, often known as the Sheltie, is a breed of herding dog. They are an intensely loyal breed. The Shetland Sheepdog is a lively, intelligent, playful, trainable 
and willing to please and obey. They are loving, loyal and affectionate with their family but are naturally aloof with strangers. For this reason, shelters must be socialised. The Shetland Sheepdog. The Swedish Lapham, it's absent Swedish Volhund, exhibit 1584. Swedish Volhund was de developed as an all purpose farm dog. They are traditionally used to control vermin, herd cattle, guard stock, and act as a watchdog. They would alert their owners of strangers and predators by barking. Swedish Valand is widely regarded as a more robust and active dog. It is an active, fun-loving dog with a friendly temperament. The Swedish Valand. The Welsh Corgi Cardigan, Exhibit 1597. Corgi is traditionally a driving dog. Its short legs enable it to dodge in between the legs of the cattle and drive them on. Corgis make excellent companions for older retired people who are still active. They're loyal, even-tempered and have a friendly nature. They are affectionate and good with children and can be suspicious of strangers. The Welsh Corgi Cardigan. The Welsh Corgi Pembroke, Exhibit 1641. The Welsh Corgi is a herding dog breed which originated in Pembrokeshire, Wales. They are famous for being the preferred breed of Queen Elizabeth II. These dogs have been favoured by British royalty for more than 70 years. The Welsh Corgi Pembroke. The White Swiss Shepherd Dog, Exhibit 1672. A new breed to Australia, recognised as recently as 2008, is the White Swiss Shepherd Dog, an elegant medium-sized breed of striking appearance with a pure white coat. It comes in both long and short coat with contrasting black pigmentation. But for working and protecting sheep, its modern function as a companion and a family dog. It is an alert, intelligent, well-rounded breed that can be trained in many disciplines, such as agility of breeding, obedience and herding. Fantastic. So... That is all of our best of breed winners from the working dog group. As we were saying before, these dogs are bred to be herders and drovers and to be custodians of flocks of animals. So they all have that in common. Different shapes and sizes because they come from a work in different terrain with different types of animals and from different weather conditions. So that actually has influenced their makeup. What's going to happen now? We are selecting eight. Eight of these working dogs will become our finalists. And then we can select best in group four, three, two, and one. But great to see our judges made a decision, called for the book. And in a few moments' time, we will find out who our top eight finalists are in this The Working Dog Group. Beautiful day here in Melbourne. In fact, we've been blessed this year to have every day to have the sun out and the dogs could be judged outside on these large rings, which, of course, look fabulous as well. We wish to 
thank our sponsors, LifeWise Pet Nutrition. They've uh, given out bags of food for all of our best of breed winners. So thank you to LifeWise. We do also thank Pet Cover for their generous sponsorship of this year's show and Plush Puppy as well. Thank you for your amazing range of products. All right. So we'll bring them out in alphabetical order. Let's bring out 1340, the Australian Shepherd. 1397, that's the Border Collie. 1459, the Collie Smooth. 1476, the, uh, the Finnish Lapund. Let's bring out 1497, the German Shepherd Dog. 1538, the Old English Sheep Dog. 1546, the Pooley. And finally, 1577, the Shetland Sheep Dog. So there are eight finalists, but you must give a round of applause to our retiring best of breed winners from the Working Dog Group. Please, a round of applause. They have made an excellent showing of themselves representing their breeds. So what will happen now? Each of these finalists, one last lap around to impress our judge, Mr Tessich, all the way from Hungary. And we will crown our winners here today. One will go on to represent the Working Dog Group for Best in Show later this afternoon. All right. Of course, cheer on your favourite. This is the Australian Shepherd. The Border Collie. The Collie Smooth. The Finnish Labhund. The German Shepherd Dog. The Old English Sheepdog. The Pooley. And finally, the Shetland Sheepdog. Great to see you cheering on these fantastic Fantastic representatives of best of breed winners from the Working Dog Group. So, the book has been called for. We're going to make our placings and we'll bring them out from group four, three, two, and finally first. Okay. The Working Dog Group, made up of breeds that are pastoral breeds and herders, some uh, drove, some muster. But they all have this natural ability to work with flocks of animals, to keep them together, to assist farmers and shepherds. Many of them are of ancient um, origin. Some have been developed in Australia. But we have our final eight here as finalists in the working dog group. All right, I think we're ready to go. You're watching General Specials Day at Melbourne Royal. We are about to bring out the winners of... Let's bring out fourth in group, 1577, the Shetland Sheepdog. Best in the working group, fourth receives 
a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a nine kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise, advertising vouchers supported by Dog News Australia. Third in the group today. Let's bring out 1476, the Finnish Lapund. Best in the group, uh, working group third. Trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Nine kilo premium dog food supported by Lifewise. Advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Okay, second in the group today. One, five, four, six, it's the Pooley. Best in the working group second, trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a nine kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise, advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Okay, now is the time. Who is going to take out best in the working dog group this year? Okay, here we go. Let's bring out One, three, four, zero, it's the Australian Shepherd. But, uh, Best in the Working Dog receives a trophy in memory of Supreme Champion Brinkley Songland Dance Man of Perfu, imported UK, donated by Mr. and Mrs. Seymour. An 18 kilo premium dog food supported by Life Files. Advertising vouchers supported by Dog News Australia, flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths, and a trophy sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Thank you. But also give a round of applause to our, our retiring um, finalists. We thank the Border Collie, the Collie Smooth, the German Shepherd Dog and the Old English Sheep Dog. All right. Now is the time. Let's have a lap of honour for our winners today. Please give it up for the Australian Shepherd, the Pooley, the Finnish Lapund, and the Shetland Sheepdog. So as we said before, this is General Specials Day at Melbourne Royal. We continue in the program with the judging of best puppy in the working dog group. All puppy of breed winners are now entering the ring to compete for best puppy in the working dog group. Thank you, Mr. Tessich.
The Australian Cattle Dog, Exhibit 1262. The Australian Cattle Dog. The Australian Shepherd, Exhibit 1325. The Australian Shepherd. The Australian Stumpy Tail Cattle Dog, Exhibit 1345. The Stumpy Tail Cattle Dog. The Bearded Collie Exhibit 1353. The Bearded Collie. The Belgium Shepherd Dog, Gronendale, Exhibit 1359. Belgium Shepherd Dog, Gronendale. <laughs> Belgium Shepherd Dog, Traveran, Exhibit 1364. The Belgium Shepherd Dog Traveran. The Border Collie Exhibit 1404.
the Border Collie. Collie Ruff, Exhibit 1437. Olive Ruff. <laughs> Finish Lapond, Exhibit One Four Seven Four. The Finnish Lapond. German Shepherd Dog, Exhibit 1506. The German Shepherd Dog. Miniature American Shepherd, Exhibit 1495. Miniature American Shepherd. Pooley, Exhibit 1540. The Pooley. Shetland Sheepdog, Exhibit 1564. Shetland Sheepdog.
Swedish Valen, Exhibit Swedish And Finally, we have the Welsh Corgi Pembroke, Exhibit 1631. Fantastic. Each of... He hasn't finished yet. So our last exhibit, just having the chance to move out and back again. But these are our best puppy of breed winners from the uh, Working Dog Group. The Welsh Corgi Pembroke. A round of applause for all our best puppy of breeds from the Working Dog Group. These are our pastoral herding breeds, bred to work with our flocks of livestock. And so we're going to narrow it down to four, four, four finalists and then We'll crown our best puppy in the working dog group at this year's Royal Melbourne Show. This puppy will go on to represent the group and be one of seven puppies to compete for puppy in show. We have seven groups of dogs. You're watching the working dog group. These are our herding or pastoral breeds. It seems that uh, Dr. Tessich has made his decision. It's called for the book. And who will our four finalists be? As we said before, these are our herding or pastoral breeds, bred to work with flocks, cattle and sheep, and sometimes goats, other different livestock. But they all possess this natural ability to, to herd and to keep flocks of animal in a, a cohesive group, to assist farmers and drovers and shepherds. And many of them are still used for this very purpose today. All right, here we go. Let's bring out one, three, five, nine, the Gronendale Bel Belgian Shepherd. One, four, three, seven, the Collie Ruff. One, five, zero, six, the German Shepherd Dog. And let's bring out 1631, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. But please put your hands together for our retiring puppy of breed winners from the Working Dog Group. Congratulations for making it this far and representing your breed at this year's Royal Melbourne Show. Each of these dogs will have one last chance to move around to impress our judge today, Dr Tesic, all the way from Hungary.
Let's take them around one at a time. Thank you with the Gronendale, the Belgian Shepherd. The Collie Ruff. This is the German Shepherd Dog. And finally, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Seems he's already called for the book. He's made his decision. So who do you think will go on to represent the Working Dog Group for Best Puppy in Show? So this is the second of our groups to be judged today. We're finally coming up with our winners after many days of judging. Thousands of dogs. All right. Going through to represent the working dog group for Puppy and Show is one, four, three, seven, the Collie Ruff. This puppy in the working dog receives a trophy rosette presented by Melbourne Royal and flowers donated by Mr. D. Griffiths. Okay, thank you to our retiring um, finalists and for our puppy and group winners. And please continue with your round of applause for their lap of honour, our best puppy in the working dog group. Also keep your applause going. Thank you, Dr Tessis, for your judging of the working dog group. Good afternoon or morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our next group will be the group one. And our judge for today will be Mr. Zelko Gadjik, being brought out by Judy Oliver, our deputy chair. The Affenpinzer. 
exhibit number 12. The FM Pinzer. Australian Silky Terrier exhibit number 15. The Australian Silky Terrier is a small and compact short-legged terrier type of dog. The breed was originally known as the Sydney Silky as was found primarily in the city of Sydney. The Silky Terrier was bred to be an urban pet and companion although it is also known for killing snakes. They are a compact dog with a temperament that is keenly alert and active. The Australian Silky Terrier. Bichon Frise exhibit 20. The words Bichon Frise means curly white lap dog. It originated in Spain as a sailor's dog and has an affinity for and enjoys water and retrieving. On the boats, however, the dog's job was that of a companion. They are gentle mannered, sensitive and playful, affectionate and do well with children because they are playful and have lots of energy. Bichon Frise are considered suitable for people with allergies as they are bred to be hypoallergenic. Bichon Frise. Bolognese exhibit 25. Originating in Italy and a small breed of the Bichon type, the name refers to the northern Italian city of Bologna. A true companion dog, the Bolognese loves to be a family pet but can be willful. He has a woolly single coat which falls in loose open winglet or flocks all over the body, but shorter on the face. The Bolognese requires daily brushing and regular bathing. Bolognese. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, exhibit 39. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is a descendant from the toy spaniels that were ladies' pets in Tudor times. King Charles II was seldom seen without his spaniels at his feet. They are known for their beautiful temperaments and affectionate, playful and tolerant of children, making them excellent, making them excellent family pets. They come in four colours, Blenheim, chestnut and white, tricolour, black, white and tan, black and tan and ruby, a solid red. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Chihuahua Long Coat, Exhibit 57. The Chihuahua was discovered in Mexico in 1850 and was named after the Mexican state in which it was found. They descended from the Aztec and Mayan temple dogs. Chihuahua long coat. Chihuahua smooth coat, exhibit 75. The Chihuahua is the smallest breed of dog. They have an apple dome skull and are longer than they are tall. Their coat can be short, long and wavy or flat. They are courageous, extremely lively, proud and adventurous. They enjoy affection. Chihuahua Smooth Coat. Chinese Crested Dog, Exhibit 94. The Chinese Crested, or Cresty, was originally from Africa, but were brought onto Chinese trading ships to hunt vermin. They named them Chinese Crested, and the name stuck. They are small, active, and graceful, and come in two types, the hairless, 
and powder puff. They are alert, charming, agile and lovable dogs and have a smooth, soft, warm skin. Chinese crested dog. English toy terrier, black and tan, exhibit 97. The English toy terrier is an extremely fast and agile dog that was once used as a ratter and to catch other small vermin. He has very distinctive candle flame shaped ears and is a very loyal family companion. They can be a little standoffish with strangers but love their family. English Toy Terrier, black and tan. Griffin Bruxua, exhibit 107. The Griffin Bruxua is a compact dog with a monkey-like expression. He was used in the stables as a ratter in Belgium. An adaptable dog wanting to play rough and tumble with children or be a couch potato. They are also known to be very stubborn. They can also be very clever and often well known for their climbing abilities. Griffin Bruxua. Havanese exhibit 130. The Havanese is a national dog of Cuba. The Havanese can come in many shades of tobacco brown through to lighter shade of cream. The coat is long, soft, lightweight and silky. And unlike other breeds, the Havanese does not have a harsh, harsh outer layer coat. Rather it is soft and light. The Havanese. Italian Greyhound, exhibit number 151. The Italian Greyhound is used for hunting rats or mice, often in combination with hunting falcons. They are the smallest of the sighthounds. Italian Greyhounds make good companion dogs and enjoy the company of people. However, the breed's slim build and short coat can make them somewhat fragile. Italian Greyhound. Japanese Chin, Exhibit 187. The Japanese Chin is considered one of the most cat-like of the dog breeds in attitude. It is alert, intelligent and independent and it uses its paws to wash and wipe its face. It has a slightly pushed in face with a thick luxurious coat and comes in either black and white or red and white. The Japanese chin distinctive appearance and personality eventually captured the hearts of Japanese royalty and resulted in ownership being restricted to those of royal and noble, noble blood only. The Japanese chin. King Charles Spaniel, exhibit 192. The King Charles Spaniel is a cobby compact companion animal, often owned by royalty, but are now a companion of many families. It is not a high energy breed and enjoys the company of family members. It is known as one of the quietest toy breeds. A distinctive feature is their domed head and their beautiful soft expression. They come in various colours, black and tan, ruby, tricolour and the well known Blenheim colour. King Charles Spaniel. Laotian, exhibit 194. The origin of the Laotian is vague. It became popular in Europe to shave the dogs and as the shaved area provided instant warmth, they were used as hot water bottles. The Laotian is reported to make an excellent guard dog. Due to their size and somewhat puppy-like behaviour, a Laotian is more likely to bark and warn off strangers. Laotian. Maltese exhibit 199. Maltese are cuddly companion dogs and thrive on love and attention. Their body is compact with a length equaling the height. 
The dog has a silky, single-layer coat that is white or light ivory. The lovely coat requires a lot of maintenance to ensure that the Maltese retains its beautiful appearance. Maltese. Miniature pincer, exhibit 216. The miniature pincer, also known as minpins, were bred in Germany to hunt rats. Pinch is German for grab or snatch. The miniature pincer is an assertive, outgoing, active and independent breed. They make great agility dogs, but they are known to be great escape artists. Miniature pincer. Papillon, exhibit 224. The Papillon's coat is abundant, line, long, fine and silky. It should also have a resilient quality and be flat on both the back and sides. The temperament of a Papillon is a happy, friendly, adventurous dog. They are not shy or aggressive. Papillon. Pekingese, exhibit 248. The Pekingese originated from China and is over 2,000 years old. They are called lion dogs due to their resemblance to Chinese guardian lions. The Pekingese were companions of the Chinese Buddhist monks and Chinese princes. The beautiful long coat of the Pekingese requires consistent maintenance. Pekingese. Pug, exhibit 287. Pugs became popular in Tibet where they were kept by Buddhist monks. The majority of pugs are fond of children and sturdy enough to be properly played with them. They can be quiet and docile, but also vivacious and teasing. Pugs show great affection for their owners and everyone else. The pug. Tibetan Spaniel, Exhibit 302. The Tibetan Spaniel were originally used as watchdogs to alert the monks to approaching travellers and were used as hot water bottles through the cold Himalayan winters. The coat is silky in texture and comes in many shades, including gold, cream, fawn, red, white, black and black and tan. The Tibetan Spaniel. Yorkshire Terrier exhibit 306. The Yorkshire Terrier was bred to catch rats 
in clothing mills. They were also used for rat baiting. Their nature is to work without human assistance. The Yorkie is active and overprotective, loves attention and should not show the soft scent temperament seen in lap dogs. They have a glossy, fine, straight and silky coat which requires attention to maintain its lovely appearance. Yorkshire Terrier. Our judge, Jelzo Gatlidge, has been over all the dogs and will now make a selection, picking out eight dogs, not in any particular order, for the eight finalists of the group one, the companion group, toy group. We've been very fortunate here today to have such beautiful weather. It's a great time to thank our wonderful sponsors, LifeWise Pet Nutrition, Pet Cover, Hush Puppy, Dog News. In selecting his final eight, we will bring the eight out and give them an armband. Judging has been over since last Thursday week and the dogs have been selected. Our final eight. Bring out exhibit number 15, the Australian Silky Terrier. Bring out exhibit number 20, the Bichon Frise. Bring out exhibit number 39, the Chihuahua Smooth Coat. Bring out exhibit number 75, the Chihuahua Smooth Coat. Bring out exhibit number 107, the Griffon. Bring out exhibit number 151, the Italian Greyhound. Bring out exhibit number 224, the Papillon. And to round out the numbers, bring out exhibit number 287, the Pug. Okay, could we have all these dogs around, please, one at a time? One at a time, please. The Australian Silky Terrier. The Bison Frise. The Cavalier. The Chihuahua. The Griffon. The Italian Greyhound. The Papillon. The Pug. These are our eight finalists in the group one, the toy group. Our judge will go back down the line and select our four for the group.
Our stewards are coming out. And our judge is making his final determination of the four he would like to award. In placing the dogs, the fourth place will be f brought out first, third and then second, before we give our best in group the nod. Mr Zolko Gadzik is making his final Decisions now, our steward, Roger Bridgeford, is making sure he has the right numbers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, bring out exhibit number 280, the pug. Best in toy group fourth receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Trophy donated by Anonymous. A nine kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Bring out exhibit 151, the Italian Greyhound. Best in Toy Group third receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a trophy donated by Anonymous, a nine kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Bring out exhibit number 15. The Australian Silky Terrier. Best in Toy Group second receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a trophy donated by Anonymous, a nine kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. And ladies and gentlemen, best in group for the toy group today will be exhibit 39, the Cavalier King Charles. Best in Toy Group receives a trophy in memory of Vic Hewitt, donated by Robin and Michelle Ackland, an 18 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, an advertising like thank... voucher supported by Dog News Australia, flowers donated by D, Mr D Griffiths, and a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. I'd like to thank now all the other exhibitors. Could they please exit the ring? Thank you very much for your participation in this competition. And now, ladies and gentlemen, all of these dogs around, the Cavalier, the Australian Silky Terrier, the Italian Greyhound, and the Pug. And now we will bring our puppy in, the puppy of the toy group.
Entering the ring now, are our puppy in group dogs competing for best puppy in the toy group. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, Exhibit 46. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Chinese Crested Dog, Exhibit 88. Chinese Crested Dog. Griffon Vaxua Exhibit 100. Griffon Bruxua. Havanese Exhibit 128. Havanese Italian Greyhound Exhibit One Four Five Italian Greyhound. Laotian Exhibit 195. Laotian Exhibit 
Miniature Pincer, Exhibit 210. Pincer. Papillon, Exhibit 233. Pekingese exhibit two four five. Pekingese, Pomeranian exhibit 259. Pomeranian, Pug, Exhibit 270. Hug. Our judge at Zelko Gadget has gone over his puppies. These are aged between six months and 12 months. They're the puppy up and coming future of the breed. We uh, we will re be selecting four of these dogs in no particular order before we select our best in group puppy. Our trophy stewards coming out with the armbands for the four that will be selected. And just marking the book finally. In no particular order, could you bring out exhibit number 46, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel? Could we have exhibit number 210, the miniature pincer?
bring out exhibit number 245, the Pekingese. And finally, could we have the exhibit number 259, the Pomeranian. Now, ladies and gentlemen, could we have these four around? The Cavalier, thank you. Miniature Pinsa. Yeah, I would like you to. The Peak. And the Pomeranian. So these are our four finalists for the Puppy in Group Award for the Toya Group. Our judge, as I said, has been over the dogs earlier. He's cut it down to the final four and it'll be down to now Just having a little technical problem here. And ladies and gentlemen, our best in group for the puppy best in group is the exhibit number 259, the Pomeranian. The best puppy in the toy group receives a trophy and rosette presented by Melbourne Royal and flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths. Could we please put our hands together to the other four finalists, other three finalists. If they could leave the ring now please. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our best puppy in group, toy group, the Pomeranian. I'd like to thank our judge as he retires back to the shade. Our next group on today will be the gun dog group. Bringing out our, our next judge. At Vet Mo is our Judy Horton. Okay. And now we will bring the group three dogs back into the ring. Entering the ring now, we have the best of breed gun dogs for the judging of best in the gun dog group.
The Braco Italiano Exhibit 534. The Braco Italian Pointer is a people loving dog which thrives on companionship. A good family dog, they get on well with other dogs and pets if trained to do so. They are not an aggressive dog but will alert if there is a reason to do so. Bred to hunt, they require more mental exercise so obedience training would be recommended. The Braco Italiano. Columbus Spaniel. Exhibit 543. The Cumber Spaniel is a gun dog that specialises in hunting, in pheasants and partridge. They are gentle and loyal with sleepy expression. Clumbers are predominantly white in colour with lemon brown or orange markings around the eyes and at the base of the tail. The Columbus Spaniel. The Cocker Spaniel, Exhibit 565. The English Cocker Spaniel is an active, good-natured, sporting dog. Originating in, in England, they were bred to drive the game towards the guns. The Cocker Spaniel's major beauty is their soft, wavy coat combined with the domed head, big brown eyes and soft fluffy ears, it is a breed of enormous visual appeal. The Cocker Spaniel. Cocker Spaniel American, Exhibit 600. The first Cocker in America was said to have arrived with the Pilgrim Fathers on the Mayfair in 1620. Settlers in subsequent centuries brought more of them to help explore and exploit the country's wildernesses. American Cockers were developed from the English Cocker in the 19th century to retrieve quail and woodstock. <clears throat> the Cocker Spaniel American. The Curly Coated Retriever, Exhibit 601. Curly Coated Retriever was originally bred in England for bird and waterfowl hunting. It is the tallest of retrievers and is distinguishable due to its tight curls. 
They, as pets, they are a lively and fun-loving breed. They, have, they are very laid back in the home and enjoy exercise. The curly-coated retriever. The English setter exhibits 617. The English setter was originally bred to set or point upland game birds. The coat is flat with light feathering of long length or short length, depending on the type. The English setter is best described as a gentleman by nature. However, it can be strong-willed and mischievous. They are energetic, people-oriented dogs. They are well suited to families and give them a attention and activity. The English Setter. The Field Spaniel exhibit 674. Sorry. The English Springer Spaniel 635. The English Springer Spaniel was traditionally bred for flushing and retrieving game. They are friendly, eager to please, quick to learn and willing to obey. Springer Spaniels are commonly used as sniffer dogs and search and rescue dogs. The English Springer Spaniel. The Field Spaniel, 674. The Field Spaniel was originally developed for the show ring by competitors who were attempting to develop an all-black Spaniel. It is a well-balanced, noble dog which is built for agility and endurance. It has a long, flat, glossy, silky textured coat that comes in liver black and roan. Field Spaniel is docile and has an independent nature without needing constant attention. The Field Spaniel. The flat-coated retriever exhibit 685. Flat-coated retriever is an active, multi-talented dog that has a strong desire to please. They have a strong muscular jaw and relatively long muzzle to allow for carrying birds and upland game. At times they are used as sniffer dogs and guide dogs. The flat-coated retriever. The German short-haired pointer, exhibit 726. German short-haired pointer was developed to be a dog suited to family life as well as a versatile hunter. The correct temperament is that of an intelligent, bold, boisterous, energetic and characteristically affectionate dog that is cooperative and easily trained. This breed is streamlined yet powerful with strong legs that make it able to move rapidly and turn quickly. The German short-haired pointer. The gold retriever, exhibit seven four five. Gold retrievers were historically developed to retrieve shot game waterfowl such as ducks and upland game, birds during hunting and sh shooting parties. They were named retrievers because of their ability to retrieve game undamaged. The Golden Retriever. The Golden Setter exhibit double seven eight. The Golden Setter was originally bred for hunting game birds. They are alert, interested, confident, fearless and willing, intelligent and capable. Their coat is straight or slightly wavy. 
goods are intensely loyal to their owners, thrive in a attentive, loving environment, and are good family dogs. The Gordon Centre. The Hungarian Visual Exhibit 796. The Hungarian Vizsla was developed as a hunter of water and upland game. Although they are lively, gentle-mannered, demonstrably affectionate and sensitive, they are also fearless and possessed of a well-developed protective instinct. The Hungarian Vizsla. The Hungarian wirehead Vizsla Exhibit 726. The wirehead Vizsla is slightly heavier than his cousin with a wiry coat. Hungarian wirehead visa. The Irish Centre, Exhibit 853, instantly recognised with his beautiful coat, which is moderately long, silky, and of a red and chestnut colour. Irish Centres get along well with children, other dogs, and any household pets and will enthusiastically greet visitors. The Irish Centre. The Irish Water Spaniel Exhibit 854. The Irish Water Spaniel is a breed best known for its distinctive curly coat. They are valued for their retrieving abilities and their extreme hardiness in the cold waters of the North Sea. The Irish Water Spaniel is essentially an active, willing and energetic companion, but early socialisation and training is a must. The Irish Water Spaniel. The Labrador Retriever. The Labrador Retriever was originally bred to find and retrieve dead or wounded birds. This has made them a king of waterfowl retrievers. Labrador's sense of smell allows them to establish scent and follow the path of its origin. Because of this detection ability, they are widely used by the police and military forces. They are also used as guide dogs. A noble characteristic of the breed is their otter tail. The Labrador Retriever. The Legato Romanolo, Exhibit 912. The Legato Romagnolo. Large Munsterlander, Exhibit 926. Its body should be the same length of its height and withers. The coat is black and white with hair of medium length. This dog has been bred for many decades for hunting and not show. Hence, coat colour is highly variable, ranging from predominantly white to predominantly black. Munsterlanders should be loyal, affectionate, 
and trustworthy. The large monster lander. The Murray River Retriever. Although only recently added to the ANKC list of breeds, the Murray River Retriever can be traced back to the mid 1800s. With Retriever as part of its name, it can also be trained to point and flush as well as track. An energetic breed, they require regular exercise and mental stimulation through training. The Murray River Retriever. The Nova Scotia Dactyling Retriever Exhibit 934. This dog originated in southwestern Nova Scotia, Canada. The smallest of the retrievers, tell us a name for their ability to entice a lure waterfowl within gunshot shot range called tolling. The Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. The pointer exhibit 942. The pointer traces back from 300 years of English history. It is used to catch rabbits and birds. It should be athletic and graceful. The immediate impression should be that of a compact, hard-driving hunting dog, alert and ready to go. The pointers are affectionate and loyal. The pointer. Spanish Water Dog, Exhibit 951. Used in its native Spain as a general purpose sheep dog and guard dog, it can also be used as a gun dog and is skilled at retrieval from water. A medium sized dog with a distinctive curly coat which should look entirely natural. They come in a variety of colours. The Spanish water dog. The Sussex Spaniel exhibit 953. Developed in Sussex in southern England, it is a low compact spaniel and a similar appearance to the Columbus Spaniel. They can be slow paced but can have a, have a clownish and energetic temperament. He's always eager to be around people, is excellent with children and be quite protective of the family. The Wamarana Exhibit 962. The Wamarana was a hunting dog and was used by royalty for hunting large game, such as boar, bear and deer. The Wamarana is elegant and athletic in appearance. It requires extensive exercise in keeping with the energetic hunting dog breed, prized for their physical endurance and stamina. Has often been referred to as a Velcro dog, as once they become acclimatised to its owner, it stick to its owner at all times. The Wamarana. The Wamarana long haired exhibit 981. Well, Springer Spaniel exhibit double nine seven. 
The Welsh Springer Spaniel is a Welsh gundog bred for flushing and re retrieving game. They are friendly, eager to please, quick to learn and willing to obey. The Welsh Springer is a compact, solidly built dog which was bred for work. He has an attractive red and white marked coat. Mrs. Annika Altfeet Mo from Sweden has made her final decision on the eight that she has chosen to be her finalist for the Gundog Group. Let's have one more round of applause for all of our Gundog winners. In alphabetical order, we're going to bring the final eight out to the carpet. Firstly, Exhibit number 557, the Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Exhibit number 574, Cocker Spaniel American. <laughs> Exhibit number 635, the English Springer Spaniel. Exhibit number 835, the Irish Setter. <laughs> Exhibit number 880, the Labrador Retriever. <laughs> Exhibit number 912, the Legato Romanola. And our last finalist in the Gundog group, sorry, there's two to go. Uh, second last is exhibit number 942, the pointer. And our last finalist, exhibit number 962, the Weimarana.
Okay, so now our final eight, one by one, are going to have a final run. But let's put our hands together for those retiring gun dog exhibits. Congratulations to you all on making the Melbourne Royal Gun Dog final. Okay, one at a time. Let's see them go. The Cocker Spaniel. The Cocker Spaniel American. The English Springer Spaniel. The Irish Setter. The Labrador Retriever. The Legato Ramo, Ro, The Legato. And the Pointer. And last but not least, the Weimarana. Mrs. Altveit Mo is having one last look at her eight finalists and she will then fill in the card with her placings of one, two, three and four in the gun dog group. Final decisions are being made and the winner of the Gundog group will return later in the day to compete with the other six group winners for the grand title of Best in Show at the 2023 Melbourne Royal. And the decisions have been made. It's in the book with the steward. And we're going to start with fourth place at the 2023 Melbourne Royal in the Gun Dog Group. Exhibit number 835, the Irish Setter. Congratulations. Best in the Gun Dog Group fourth receives a 
trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a nine kilo premium dog food supported by Life Wise, advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. And in third place, exhibit number 912, the Legato Romanolo. Best in the Gun Dog Group, third, a trophy and sash donated by Melbourne Royal, a nine kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise and advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. And in second place in the 2023 Gun Dog Group, 574, the Cocker Spaniel American. Best in the Gundog Group, second, trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a nine kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise and a $200 advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. So, after eight days of breed judging and a big entry of gun dogs, Mrs Altfeet Mo from Sweden has chosen as her best in group exhibit number 635, the English Springer Spaniel. Best in the gun dog group receives a trophy in memory of Wayne Pearson donated by Pampa Dalmatians and 18 kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise, advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia, flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths and a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Please show your appreciation for the four retiring gun dog exhibits. Just out, out Louise, out. And one final Congratulatory clap for our four group winning gun dogs as they go round the ring. Congratulations. Okay, so now we have a special award for the best of the five rarer gun dog spaniels. They're going to now enter the ring and come round. The Columbus Spaniel, the Field Spaniel, the Irish Water Spaniel, who's got another idea of where he's heading the Sussex Spaniel and the Welsh Springer Spaniel. And the decision has been made, and this year, the best of the rarer spaniels has been awarded to the Columbus Spaniel. Congratulations. Thank you very much to the other exhibits. We will now proceed with the puppy in group finalists in the gun dog group.
over the last eight days, these exhibits. Now entering the ring of the have won the best puppy of their breed. Of each breed. The Cocker Spaniel, Exhibit 559. Cocker Spaniel. Cocker Spaniel American, Exhibit 584. The Cocker Spaniel American. The English Setter, Exhibit 619. The English Setter. The English Springer Spaniel Exhibit 643. The English Springer Spaniel, the German Shorthead Pointer, Exhibit Seven Zero Eight. German short head pointer. The Golden Retriever, Exhibit 758. The Golden Retriever. The Gordon Setter, Exhibit 775.
the golden setter. The Hungarian Vizsla exhibits 789. The Hungarian Vizsla. The Irish Centre Exhibit 825. The Irish Setter. The Irish Water Spaniel, Exhibit 854. The Irish Water Spaniel. The Labrador Retriever, 864. The Labrador Retriever. Pointer Exhibit 944. The pointer. Wimarana exhibit nine five five. The Waimarana. Waimarana long hair, exhibit 982.
the Welsh Spring Spaniel. Our judge, Mrs. Annika Altveit Mo from Sweden, is now going to choose her four finalists in the gun dog puppy group. Our four finalists, exhibit number 559, the Cocker Spaniel. Exhibit number 789, the Hungarian Vishla. Exhibit number 825, the Irish Setter. And our final finalist, exhibit number 944, The Pointer. Please congratulate our other finalists as they leave the ring. And our judge is now going to have one final look at her four finalists. First of all, the Cocker Spaniel. Please show your appreciation. The Hungarian Vishla. The Irish Setter. And the Pointer. And the decision has been made. Best puppy in group at the 2023 Melbourne Royal is exhibit number 944, the pointer. Please congratulate the other finalists as they leave the ring. Best puppy in the gun dog group receives a trophy and rosette presented by Melbourne Royal, flowers donated by Mr. D. Griffiths. And a final congratulations as our pointer makes its final lap for best puppy in group. Congratulations. And please, let's thank our judge, Mrs. Annika Altveit Mo of Sweden. Thank you. I'm sure you're enjoying General Specials Day here at the Melbourne Royal. It's truly just such a celebration of pedigree, purebred animals, of dogs, people that have bred some wonderful animals that type and soundness and health are of paramount importance. So, of course, we make uh, no apology in saying that this is truly a celebration of purebred dogs. The Melbourne Royal Show, of course, is 
one of the largest and certainly the most prestigious in the Southern Hemisphere. I think we're ready to go with our non-sporting group. Please make welcome to the ring, Mr. Gerardo Pellucci, all the way from Argentina. He's accompanied by the Deputy Chair of the Dog Section, Judy Oliver. Welcome back to the ring. So this is the non-sporting group, a collection of dogs of all shapes and sizes, fascinating group. We are now judging for best in the non-sporting group. Boston Terrier Exhibit 2114. This tuxedo-clad little dog is a Native American breed, a smooth-coated, short-headed, complexly built, medium-sized dog. The Boston Terrier conveys an impression of determination, strength and activity with a style of high order and a graceful and easy carriage. His captivating expression is alert, kind and intelligent with large, round, dark eyes. The coat is easy care, being short, smooth, lustrous and fine in texture. The Boston is lively and intelligent, but also determined and strong-willed. Boston Terrier. British Bulldog exhibit 2131. The, the British Bulldog originated from Great Britain and was bred for bull baiting. Despite their heavy, strong and determined appearance, British Bulldogs are affectionate and gentle companion animals. Whilst exceptionally loyal to their family, they remain good-natured and are tolerant of children. British Bulldog. Chow Chow, exhibit 2156. The Chow Chow is one of the oldest dog breeds originating from China. They were bred as working, hunting and herding dogs. It is known for its black blue tongue and lips. It has a thick double coat and distinctive mane giving it a leonine appearance. It is often called the lion dog. Chow chows are extremely protective of their owners and property. Although the chow chow is not an excessively active breed, they do enjoy daily exercise. Chow chow. Dalmatian exhibit 2173. 
The Dalmatian has a mysterious past and were often seen with bands of gypsies or trotting alongside carriages with horses. They are the only spotted dog and have black or liver spots. They are a mascot for fire, mascot for fire stations and have been used as service dogs. Dalmatians have an affinity with horses and love to run with their family. They are loyal and loving companions and are eager, eager to please their owners. Dalmatian. French Bulldog exhibit 2238. The French Bulldog is full of courage and they are known for the characteristic bat ears and their stocky build. French Bulldogs are very sweet and an excellent companion. The French Bulldog rarely barks and if he does it's often to draw attention, to point out that he needs something or just because he is not happy. This breed is patient and affectionate with its owners, especially with children. German Spitz Klein, exhibit 2268. The German Spitz Klein descended directly from the Nordic herding dogs. They have a compact body with a dense standoff coat, tail curled over its back and its head resembles a fox. The German Spitz is a happy, intelligent, friendly dog. They love human company and like nothing better than to be included in any family activities. German Spitz Klein. German Spitz Mattel. The German Spitz Mattel is slightly bigger than its cousin, the German Spitz Klein. But just as its German Spitz Klein, it was descended directly from the Nordic herding dogs and also has a compact body with a dense standoff coat, tail coat over its back, and its head resembles a fox. German Spitz Mattel. Great Dane, exhibit 2300. The Great Dane is known for its large size and is the tallest of all dog breeds. They are known as a gentle giant. The Great Dane is a great dog for small children and a loving family, as long as it grows up in the family from puppyhood. Great Dane. Japanese Spitz, exhibit number 2320. The Japanese Spitz is an active, loyal and bright breed. Their attractive white double coat needs some attention to maintain its handsome appearance. The breed is known for their great courage, affection and devotion, making them great watchdogs and ideal companions. Japanese Spitz. Karelian Bear Dog, exhibit number 2361. Regarded in its native Finland as a national treasure, this breed was popular for hunting large game, including the Eurasian brown bear, as its name suggests. Coat colour is always black and white, and although affectionate towards their owners, can be very wary of strangers, so proper socialisation 
is essential. Another breed which is relatively rare in this country, the Karelian Bear Dog. Kazond exhibit 2334. The Kazond became known as a Dutch barge dog as it worked as a watchdog and guard dog on riverboats, barges and on farms. Kazons tend to be very playful with quick reflexes and strong jumping ability. They are quick learners and eager to please. Kazons make excellent agility and obedience dogs. Kazond. Laza Apso, exhibit 2352. The Laza Apso originated in Tibet. It was bred to alert the monks to intruders who entered the monasteries. They are independent as well as companion dogs. Lazas are alert with a keen sense of hearing and a rich sonorous bark that belies their size. Their beautiful coat requires consistent attention to maintain its attractive appearance. Laza Apso. Peruvian hairless dog, medium, exhibit number 2359. As the name suggests, native to Peru and has been officially recognised as part of Peru's cultural heritage. Although primarily, primarily hairless, it may have short hair on its head, feet or the tip of its tail. There are three sizes, but all should be slim and elegant, with the impression of force and harmony without being coarse. Peruvian hairless dog. Poodle miniature exhibit 2384. The poodle comes in three types, miniature, standard and toy. They were used as a water retrieving dog. The poodle is very active, intelligent and elegant. It is squarely built and well proportioned. Miniature. Poodle Standard, Exhibit 2416. The poodle has a keen sense of instinct instinctive behaviour, in particular marking and hunting drives, and are more readily observable than in most other breeds. Standard. Poodle Toy, Exhibit 2463. Poodles have a single layer coat. The texture ranges from coarse and woolly to soft and wavy and requires ongoing attention to maintain its striking appearance. Poodle toy. Skipper key, exhibit 2471. The skipper key were bred for hunting vermin on the boats. They are known for the rough around their neck, which makes for the fox-like expression. Known for a stubborn, mischievous and headstrong temperament, skipper keys require training in a secure fenced-in space to run. They are naturally curious and high energy dogs and require ample exercise and supervision. Skipper key. Shaggy 
Sharpay, Exhibit 2489. The Sharpay is known for its distinctive features of deep wrinkles and a blue-black tongue. It was kept as a general purpose farm dog in the Chinese countryside and used for hunting, protecting and herding stock and guarding the home and family. During that time, the Sharpay was bred for intelligence, strength and, and a scowling face. The Sharpay is extremely devoted, loyal and affectionate to its family as, am as amenable to accepting strangers given time and proper introduction at a young age. Sharpay. Shizu, exhibit 2518. The Shizu was named for its flowing mane-like coat, similar to that of the lion. It has been featured in ancient Chinese artwork throughout many centuries. Their abundant coat needs consistent maintenance to ensure its handsome appearance. They are loving and loyal, bonding particularly well with one member of the family and are quite robust. Shizu. Sholo, it's Quintley Miniature, Exhibit 2531. The Sholo, it's Quintley was bred as bed warmers, food and for sacrificial offerings and is one of the world's oldest and rarest breed. Adult Sholos are noted for their calm demeanour, but puppies can be extremely energetic, noisy and often chewy until they reach maturity. The Sholo is very intelligent, loyal, alert, athletic and extremely loving to its family. Sholo, it's Quintly. So that uh, completes the judging of the breeds from the non-sporting group. So we're about to select our finalists from this non-sporting group, a diverse collection of dogs that don't really quite fit into any of the other groups. So they are in this non-sporting group. We've got small, tiny poodles through to the large, giant Great Danes. So dogs of all shapes and sizes. Many Spitz breeds are in this group. So, a fascinating group. Many of the curiosities of dogdom are here. So what's going to happen now? This is the non-sporting group. We're going to select eight finalists. And these finalists will receive an armband as a uh, gift from the Royal Melbourne. And they'll have one last chance after this to try and make it onto the mat for best in group in the non-sporting group. So, Mr. Pellucci is making his selections, filling out the book. I wonder who it will be. So we've already had the judging of the um, utility group. Gun dog group, the toy group. This is the non-sporting group. And also the working dog group. So we're getting through. Quite a few of our winners have already been selected. They'll return in a few hours' time to compete for best in show. All right, I think we're ready. We'll just bring them out in alphabetical order. So please, let's bring out exhibit number 2131, the British Bulldog. Next up is 2156, the Chow Chow. 2173, that's the Dalmatian. Exhibit number 2320, the Japanese Spitz. We're going to bring out 2384, the Miniature Poodle. 2416, the Standard Poodle. 2463, the Toy Poodle. And one more. Here we go. 2489, the Sharpay. So they receive a rosette. But please, a round of applause for our retiring best of breed winners from the non-sporting group. Congratulations. Many of them have beaten many, breed, many uh, exhibits to represent their breed. So just as soon as they've exited the ring, each of these exhibits has one last chance to move around to impress our judge, Mr. Pellucci. So if we can move them back, please.
All right, off we go. First up, please put your hands together for the British Bulldog. The Chow Chow. The Dalm Dalmatian. The Jap Spitz. The Miniature Poodle. The Standard Poodle. The Toy Poodle. Off we go with the Sharpe. So just one of these beautiful eight dogs will go on to represent the non-sporting group in Best in Show. I wonder who it would be. But Mr Pellucci's called for the book. He's made his decisions. There's probably not much they can do to change his mind at this moment in time. So one of them will go on to represent the non-sporting group. They'll make it down to the top seven dogs in the show. I wonder who it will be. But we'll announce from four, three, two, and then best in the non-sporting group. It's wonderful weather here. Melbourne's really turned it on today. In fact, the whole week we've had superb weather at this year's Royal Melbourne show. Here we go. This is exciting. Here we go, fourth in group today. Let's bring out exhibit number two, one, seven, three. It's the Dalmatian. Best in non-sporting group fourth receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a trophy donated by Chow Lee Kennels, nine kilograms of premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Third in the group today. Two, one, five, six, it's the Chow Chow. Best in non-sporting group third receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Trophy donated by Chow Lee Kennels. Nine kilograms of premium dog food supported by LifeWise. And an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Okay. It's the pointy end of the competition, isn't it? Here we go. Second in the group today goes to exhibit number two, four, six, three. It's the Toy Poodle. Best in non-sporting group second receives a trophy in rosette donated by Charlie Kennels, a trophy in sash presented by Melbourne Royal, nine kilograms of premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Of course, this is the dream of every breeder and exhibitor to make it onto the number one, one spot. Are you ready, Mr Pellucci? Today, best in the group, let's bring out Two, three, eight, four, the Miniature Poodle. The best in the non-sporting group receives a trophy in rosette donated by Mrs J Turney, Turnley, 18 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia, flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths and a trophy in sash presented by Melbourne Royal. But please put your hands together for the Bulldog, the Japanese Spitz, the Sanded Poodle and the Sharpe as they exit the ring and retire from competition. But keep your applause going for a lap of honour. Here we go. Congratulations. First in the group to the miniature poodle. Second to the toy poodle. Third to the chow chow. And fourth to the Dalmatian. So, most of our winners have been decided on, but we still have to judge a couple of more groups. But before we do, we continue on with best puppy in the non-sporting group. 
Best puppy in the non-sporting group. All right, let's welcome to the ring our um, puppies. Best puppy of breeds from the non-sporting group. This is the Boston Terrier. And the Chow Chow. Our Dalmatian. The German Spitz. The Great Dane. The Japanese Spitz. The Kaisond. The Laza Apso. Miniature Poodle. The Standard Poodle. The Skipper Key. The la, uh, the la, uh, sorry, the Shih Tzu and the Tibetan Terrier. So, because the Dalmatian was fourth in the group, it is automatically our best puppy. But we also wish to acknowledge our other finalists today. So four of these dogs, including the Dalmatian, will be selected as finalists. Of course, because that's a great honour to be selected as a finalist at the Melbourne Royal Show. So apart from the Dalmatian, three others will be selected. Boston Terrier, exhibit 2099. As we said, the Dalmatian is automatically our best puppy in group. What a mighty win for a puppy to take fourth in the group in the non-sporting category. So we bring out the Kays Hund. We bring out the Miniature Poodle. And rounding out this top four... is the Boston Terrier. So congratulations. Also congratulations and well done to our retiring puppies from the non-sporting group. This so. puppy in the non-sporting group receives a trophy in rosette presented by Melbourne Royal and flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths. So congratulations, here is our best puppy in group winner, the Dalmatian, and well done to our other finalists, the Kays Hond, the Boston, and the Miniature Poodle. So congratulations, well done. And our Dalmatian returns later in the day to compete for best puppy 
in the non-sporting group. Okay, a couple of groups to go, the Hound Group and the Terrier Group. Just two winners remain to be decided. I wonder who they will be. Judy Oliver returns to the ring, the Deputy Chair, with Mr George, well, Dr George Testich, all the way from Hungary. We're now going to judge the Hound Group in a few moments' time. So the hound group, of course, primarily hunting breeds. Some of them are high on leg, the, the side hounds, and others are short on leg. The scent hounds, but a fascinating group, so please don't go away. It's great to see so many people wandering through the grounds of the Melbourne Royal and um, just enjoying the dogs here. I can see our best of breed winners arriving into the assembly area. So... Let's please make welcome to the ring, Dr. George, George Teshich, all the way from Hungary. Thank you to our Deputy Chair, Judy Oliver, who accompanies him today. We're now going to judge for best in the hound group. So hounds, hunting animals. As we said before, some have keen eyesight, others acute sense of smell, others with great hearing ability. They come from the four corners of the earth. Um, a diverse group of animals, but um, fascinating nonetheless. We make welcome to the ring our best of breed winners from the Hound Group. Make them welcome.
The Afghan Hound, Exhibit 1011. The Afghan Hound. The Azawak, Exhibit 1014. The Azawak, bred by the various other nomads of the Sahara. The breed is used there as a guard dog and to hunt gazelle and hare at speeds up to 40 miles per hour. The Azawak is armonied and thin. It moves with a distinctly feline gait and can be found in a variety of colours as well as varying degrees of refinement. They have high energy and tremendous endurance. The Azawak. <coughs> the Basenji Exhibit 1019. The Pasenji is a breed of hunting dog that was bred from stock originating in Central Africa. The Pasenji produces an unusual yodel-like sound, commonly called a baru, due to its unusually shaped larynx. This trait also gives the, the Pasenji the nickname Barkless Dog. <coughs> The Basenji. Basset Fav de Britannia, Exhibit 1024. This breed was developed in France as a hunting dog. It is a smallish, neat looking hound. Free from exaggeration, is lively and friendly. They are wire coated and the coat is very harsh to the touch. Dense and coloured red wheat and or fawn. The Basset Fauve de Bretagne. <coughs> the Basset Hound. Exhibit 1029, the Basset Hound is a French scent hound originally bred from, for the purpose of hunting rabbits and hare. Their sense of smell for tracking is exceptional. They are large, solid and long with curb saver tails held high over the long backs. Also known for its hanging skin structure, it can cause the face to occasionally look sad. Their trailing ears, which along with the bloodhound are the longest of any breed, help track the scent of what they are tracking. The Basset Hound. The Beagle. Exhibit number 1053. Beagles were developed in Great Britain and ascent hounds, developed primarily for tracking hare and rabbit. They have a great sense of smell and tracking instinct which sees them employed as detection and quarantine dogs. The Beagle. Borzoi, Exhibit 1070. The Borzoi is one of the most elegant and spectacular of all breeds. Rather like a greyhound in build, but taller and with a long silky coat which adds softness to its rather angular frame. 
The bullseye is an agile, swift, and courageous dog. The bullseye. Ducks and long head, exhibit 1078. The dark was developed in Germany and was a favourite of Queen Victoria. They were bred to hunt small animals such as rabbits. Dachshunds are a short-legged, long-bodied breed. They were bred to scent, chase and flush, flush out badgers. Ducks and miniature long haired exhibit one zero nine two. They're a short legged, long body breed. They're a bred to scent, chase, and flash out badges. The dachshund was required to move over all types of terrain, including dense undergrowth and water. Dachshund miniature long hair. Dachshund miniature smooth head, exhibit 1105. Darks and miniature, smooth head. Darks and smooth head, exhibit double one, double zero. Of course, come in three varieties of coat, smooth, long and wide head, and in two sizes, standard and miniature. Ducks and smooth head. Action Wirehead exhibit double one double one. Darkson Wirehead. Darkson Rabbit Long Head. Exhibit Double one one two.
Dear Handy, Exhibit Double One One Eight. The Scottish deer hound was bred to hunt red deer by coursing and also deer stalking. It re resembles a larger rough-coated greyhound. Deer hound is, do is a docile and eager to please with a bearing of gentle dignity. Very friendly, love to chase and need considerable exercise. The deer hound. The Greyhound Exhibit Double One Three One. Greyhound was bred for hunting. They are well known for their high speed, proving their value in racing. They are quite gentle and loyal to owners. They are very loving creatures and they enjoy the company of their humans and other dogs. The Greyhound. The Harrier, double one three four. Country of origin was England. The Harrier was used for hunting hares by trailing them. It's a muscular hunting hound with a hard coat to protect him from the weather when in the field. Cheerful, sweet tempered, toler tolerant of people, and excellent with children. The Harrier. The Irish Wolfhound, exhibit 1135. The Irish Wolfhound was used to hunt large game for hundreds of years. It is a side hound and excited by a chase. Their coat is rough and whiskery. The Irish Wolfhound creates a strong bond with their family. The Petit Basset Griffon von Dien, exhibit 1147. The PBGV, as it's known, was bred to trail hares in bramble filled, bramble filled terrain of the Vendée district in France. The dogs have a tousled appearance with a harsh double coat that is both long and rough. They are outspoken dogs. If their pack begins howling or singing, the dog will join in with amusing results. The Petit Basset Griffon von Dion. Pharaoh Hound, exhibit 1157. The Faroe Hound is a national hound of the Mediterranean nation of Malta, traditionally used by some Maltese men for hunting. The Faroe Hound should appear both graceful and elegant, as well as powerful and athletic. The Faroe Hound's coat variety is from a silky texture to hard, and it must never be so profuse as to stand away from the dog's skin. The Portuguese Padengo, small wire head, exhibit 1161. Portuguese Padengo traditionally hunted in, in a pack with humans. When game is found, they will kill it and bring it back to the hunter or wait for the hunter to catch up and shoot it. Padengo, a small, friendly, hardy, Lively and intelligent companions. 
They're very active and usually good with children and other animals when socialised from an early age. The Rhodesian Ridgeback, exhibit double one eight one. The Rhodesian Ridgeback originated in Zimbabwe and worked as a hunting dog and as a retriever, took care of children and guarded properties. They are loyal and intelligent, can be somewhat aloof to strangers, characterised by a ridge down the centre of their back. The Rhodesian Ridgeback. The Saluki exhibit double one double nine. Salukis have been used to hunt quarries such as gazelles, hares and ibex. They are considered to be the royal dog of Egypt and some appear in Egyptian tombs. Salukis are sight hounds, which means they hunt by sight run the quarry down, catch it and kill or retrieve it. They're not a breed which is demanding of attention and physical contact with humans. The Saluki. Saluki exhibits 1204. Salukis can be a one person or one family breed affectionate with their own people but aloof towards strangers. Like many hounds, his stubborn nature can make him a handful of first-time dog owners. A North African breed, especially or specifically a member of the sight hound family, found mainly in Morocco. The Slugi. And finally, the Whippet. Exhibit number 1257. The whippet was bred to hunt by sight, coursing game in open areas at high speeds. They are a sight hound breed that originated in England. Whippets are generally quiet and gentle dogs and may be content to spend much of the day resting. They are predominantly racing dogs. They are the fastest dog of their weight. The Whippet. Okay. These are the best of breed winners from the Hound Group. Hound Group hunting animals. And as you can see, they tend to either be tall or short. So we talk about long-legged hounds or sight hounds, capable of great speed and keen eyesight, racing elegant lines. And the others, many of the others fall into being short-legged, so close to the ground, and this is an amazing ability to use their nose to scent. So a fascinating group of dogs. This is the Hound Group. Just one more group after this to judge. So we have five of our winners. We're about to find out in a few moments' time who will represent the Hound Group in Best in Show today. So what's going to happen, our judge now is making a selection of eight finalists. These eight finalists will be whittled down to four when we place our group from four, three, two and one. Best in group first. We will be one of seven dogs that will represent the hound group. Sorry, will be the, the dog that represents the hound group. One of seven for best in show. So it's great you're here enjoying dogs. The Royal Melbourne Show. Perfect day, great weather. So, whether you are sitting here in the stands or watching on the live streaming at home, please know you're very welcome. Of course, this is a show, great, a showcase of pedigree dogs, purebred animals. And the breeders are to be congratulated for producing such quality animals. At this time, we wish to thank our sponsors, LifeWise Pet Nutrition. 
We ready to go? All right. We're going to bring out eight, and we'll call them out in alphabetical order. Let's bring out one, zero, two, nine, the Basset Hound. One, zero, seven, zero, the Borzoi. Let's bring out one, zero, seven, eight, the Long-Haired Dachshund. Let's bring out one, one, zero, zero, the Smooth-Haired Dachshund. Let's bring out one, 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 two, the Dachshund Rabbit Long-Haired. Let's bring out one, one, two, nine, the Grand Basset Griffon Vendion. The Petit Basset Griffon Vendion. It's the wrong one, Peter. Oh, sorry. The Petit. Yeah. Let's bring out one, one, eight, one, the Rhodesian Ridgeback. And finally, rounding out the top eight, one, one, nine, nine, the Saluki. But. Please join me in giving a round of applause to our retiring best of breed winners as they leave the ring. Many of them beat a large number of dogs and should be very proud that they represented their breed so well here in this lineup. Each of these dogs now will have one chance to move around to impress our judge, Mr. Tessich, before we decide on who will represent the hound group. Put your hands together for the Basset Hound. Keep it going for the Borzoi. The long-haired Dachshund. The smooth-haired Dachshund. The Dachshund Rabbit long-haired. The Petit Basset Griffon Vendion. The Rhodesian Ridgeback. And finally, the Saluki. Okay. Unfortunately, there has to be a time when we decide who is going to win, which one conforms most closely to that breed standard, which dog has really turned it on today to make a great showing of themselves. Which one is classic breed type? So the hound group you're watching. And you can see we have Dachshunds and Basset Hounds. Uh, hounds low to the ground. And then we have some of these sight hounds that are high on leg, keen eyesight, capable of great speed. We're now judging for best in the hound group. We also wish to acknowledge Pet Cover, a kind sponsor of this show. Also, LifeWise Pet Nutrition, who have given bags of dog, dog food to our winners and to all of our best breed winners, in fact. We also um, thank Plush Puppy. How are we going? What's that? Not sorted yet. Oh, it's not sorted yet. We better make sure that that book is checked and correct. Don't want to make any faux pas here today. As we're saying, this is the Hound Group, one of seven groups to be judged. So far, we've come up with five winners, just two remain. He's not ready. You are. All right. Here we go. Fourth in the group today. Let's bring out exhibit number 1199, the Saluki. Do we have our sponsors? Hello? Is everybody home? Hello? Best in the Hound Group 4th receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. A nine kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise. Advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Third in the group in the Hound Group today goes to exhibit number one. One eight one. It's the Rhodesian Ridgeback. 
Western Hand Group third receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a nine kilo premium dog food, supported by Lifewise. Advertising vouchers supported by Dog News Australia. Okay. And second in the group. Let's bring out 1147, the Petit Basset Griffon Vondion. Best in the Hound Group second receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, a nine kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise, advertising vouchers supported by Dog News Australia. All right, here we go. Dr. Tessich's uh, selection for best in the Hound Group goes to 1029. It's the Basset Hound. But please, best. let's have a round of applause for our retiring hounds while we make our announcements of sponsorship. Best in the Hound Group receives a trophy in memory of. Supreme Champion, Windell Irish Lullaby, donated, donated by R. Barwick and D. Smith, an 18 kilo premier dog food supported by LifeWise, advertising vouchers supported by Dog News Australia, flowers donated by Mr. D. Griffiths, a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Please put your hands together for the Basset Hound, the Petit Basset, Griffon Von Dion, the Rhodesian Ridgeback and the Saluki. So our Basset returns later to compete for best in show. How exciting. So one winner, one group winner to go. But before we do that, we have our puppies from the Hound Group to judge. And we'll come up with a winner there as well. We are now judging for best puppy in the Hound Group. The Afghan Exhibit 1001 The Afghan Hound Basset Fauve de Bretagne, Exhibit 1024. Basset Fauve de Bretagne. Big 
Legal Exhibit 1046. The Beagle. D Darkson Long Hair, Exhibit One Zero Eight Zero. Jackson Long Head. Jackson Miniature Long Head, one zero nine four. That's a miniature long hair. Miniature smooth head dachshund, exhibit double one zero three. The Rhodesian Ridgeback, exhibit double one seven four. The Rhodesian Ridgeback. Whip it to exhibit number one, two, three, seven. They whip it. Fantastic. These are our best puppy of breed winners from the Hound Group. We need four finalists. Four will be pulled out. And then we will find our winner for best puppy in the Hound Group. Hounds, of course, are hunting dogs. They do their jobs in different ways. Some are high on leg and some are short on leg. Some are able to uh, work down the burrows and dens and lairs and sets of animals and 
that they prey on and others are able to cover the ground at great speed to track down their prey. And you can see a selection of both of these uh, types of hounds here. So, just four. Let's bring out exhibit number 1046, the Beagle. Let's bring out 1094, the miniature long-haired Dachshund. Let's bring out 1103, the miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. And finally, 1237, the Whippet. But a round of applause to our retiring um, puppies from the Hound Group. All right, each of these exhibits will have a chance to move around to make an final and lasting impression on our judge, Mr. Tesic, all the way from Hungary. All right. Round of applause for the Beagle. The miniature long-haired Daxon. The miniature smooth-haired Daxon. And finally, the Whippet. All right. Who will it be? Just one award to be given now. Here we go. Let's bring out one, two, three, seven. It's the Whippet. Best puppy in the Hound Group receives a trophy in rosette presented by Melbourne Royal and flowers donated by Mr. D. Griffiths. Thank you. Will you please put your hands together for the Beagle and the two Daxons as they retire from the ring. Well done for making the final four. But you must put your hands together for the Whippet. Congratulations and will return soon to compete for best in show. Well done to our Whippet. You'll also need to... Give a round of applause to Mr. Tessich. Thank you so much for coming and judging the Hound Group at this year's Royal Melbourne Show. All right. Did you know there's just one group to go, the Terrier Group? How exciting. I can see our best of breeds are assembled there. Let's make welcome to the ring today after we bring out our board. Our judge. Our judge today, accompanied by Judy Oliver, the deputy chair of the dog section, Dr. Zelko Gagic. So please make him welcome from Slovenia. A round of applause for our terrier judge. Our terrier best of breeds are now entering the ring. We are now judging for best in the terrier group.
Airedale Terrier, Exhibit 311. The Airedale Terrier, known as the King of Terriers, is a descendant of the now extinct Black and Tan Terrier. It was developed in the 19th century in the Airedale and Wharfdale areas of Yorkshire by local otter hunters who wanted a terrier to work with otter and vermin and to double as a guard dog. He is a well-built muscular dog with a dense coat which lies straight and close to the body. Airedale Terrier. American Staffordshire Terrier, Exhibit 318. The American Staffordshire Terrier is a medium-sized, short-coated American dog breed. Early ancestors of this breed came from England where they were used for farm use, guarding, dog fighting and companionship. The Amstaff is a people-oriented dog that thrives when he is made part of the family and given a job to do. American Staffordshire Terrier. Australian Terrier, Exhibit 354. The Australian Terrier is a small and compact, short-legged terrier type of dog descended from the rough-coated type of terriers brought from Great Britain to Australia. They are excellent ratters and hunters, but also love to be with people. They have medium-length, shaggy, harsh double coat that is not normally trimmed. The coat colours are shades of blue or red with a lighter coloured top knot. Their ears are erect and pointed, and they move with a free, springy, forceful gait. Australian Terrier. Border Terrier, Exhibit 359. The Border Terrier has its origins in the Cheviot Hills region of the Border Country and were bred to hunt and kill foxes in the rugged hill country. They are active, strong and tireless with weather resisting coats. The Border Terrier is game, alert, active and agile, capable of squeezing through narrow apertures and scrambling over walls. By nature, good tempered and affectionate. Border Terrier. Bull Terrier, Exhibit 365. The Bull Terrier is the gladiator of the canine world. Originally bred for fighting, it is known for its courage and strength. It is recognisable through its egg-shaped head and triangular eyes. It is exceptionally powerful for its size. Bull Terrier. Can Terrier, Exhibit 371. The Cairn Terrier originated in Scotland and was bred to flush out rats and rodents which hid in rocky piles. The Cairn has a double layered water resistant coat and comes in a variety of different colours. They are adventurous, intelligent, loyal and love to dig. They love to go walking with their owners. Cairn Terrier. Dandy Dinmont Terrier, Exhibit 385. Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Fox Terrier Smooth, Exhibit 387. The Smooth Fox Terrier was first in the Fox Terrier family. This breed is significant due to the amount of terriers who are believed to be of de believed to have been descended from this family. The Smooth Fox Terrier's historic profession is fox bolting 
A fox bolting dog will accompany a pack of foxhounds and bolt after foxes, drive them out from their hiding spots and into line of sight. Fox terrier smooth. Fox terrier wire, exhibit 390. The wire-haired fox terrier has a hard and crisp double coat with a coarse texture underneath that provides protection from the cold. It should be dense, so dense that the skin cannot be seen or felt. The breed was also thought to have been bred to chase foxes into their underground burrows. The dog's short, strong tails were used as handles by the hunter to pull them back out of the burrows. Fox terrier wire. German Hunting Terrier, Exhibit 392. The German Hunting Terrier was developed in Germany as a functional hunting dog and is used there on a wide variety of game, including boar, badger, fox and weasel. The German Hunting Terrier is a courageous, reliable, social and friendly dog. German Hunting Terrier. Jack Russell Terrier, Exhibit 400. Jack Russell Terriers are first and foremost a working terrier, originally bred to bolt fox from their dens during hunts. The Jack Russell Terrier's high energy and drive make these dogs ideally suited to a number of different dog sports, such as fly ball and agility. Jack Russell Terrier. Kerry Blue Terrier exhibit 416. The Kerry Blue was originally bred to control vermin, but over time they became a general working dog, used for a variety of jobs such as herding cattle and sheep, and also a guard dog. Kerry Blue Terriers are strong-headed and highly spirited. They have a soft, wavy to curly coat that comes in several, several shades of blue. Puppies are born black. The blue appears gradually as the puppy grows older. Kerry Blue Terrier. Norfolk Terrier. Exhibit 431, beg your pardon, 427. The Norfolk Terrier was originally bred as a barn dog to get rid of vermin. It is the smallest of the working terriers and has a wire haired coat. He is compact and cobby and only stands 10 inches tall, making him a great family dog. And he only needs limited amounts of room. Norfolks are self confident and carry themselves with presence and importance, holding their heads and tails erect. The Norfolk Terrier. Norwich Terrier Exhibit 431. The Norwich Terrier originates in the United Kingdom and was bred to hunt small vermin or rodents. It is one of the smallest terriers and has a double coat. Small but hardy dogs, they can be courageous, intelligent and affectionate. Norwich are not given to unnecessary barking, but they will warn of a stranger approaching. Once they realise that there is no threat, they can become friends. Norwich Terrier. Scottish Terrier, Exhibit 460. Scottish Terriers were originally bred to hunt and kill vermin on farms and to hunt badgers and foxes in the highlands of Scotland. They are a rugged breed with a wiry outer coat and a soft, dense undercoat. The breed is known to be independent and self-assured, playful, intelligent and has been nicknamed the Die Hard because of its rugged nature and endless determination. Scottish Terrier. Sky Terrier, Exhibit 465. The Sky Terrier was bred to hunt fox and otter from among the rocky cairns. The sky's length is twice as long as the height. The sky is very good natured, loyal, polite, loving and affectionate.
Sky Terrier. Soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. The soft-coated Wheaton Terrier was bred in Ireland to be an all-purpose farm dog whose duties included herding, watching and guarding livestock and hunting and killing vermin. It is an energetic and playful breed. Wheatons are known to behave in a puppy-like manner throughout their life. Soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Exhibit 485. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier was originally bred for bull baiting. It is known for its character of intelligence, fearlessness and loyalty. Staffords are human-oriented dogs and are well suited to families with children. The Stafford does everything full throttle, play, work and love. It is extremely courageous and obedient, affectionate with a sense of humour. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Welsh Terrier, Exhibit 527. The Welsh Terrier originates from Wales. It was originally bred for hunting fox, rodents and badger. The Welsh is lively, inquisitive, always ready for a game and unable to resist a chase. Welsh, Welsh Terriers get along well with children. They love to play and will follow a child as it plays. Welsh Terrier. West Highland White Terrier, Exhibit 531. West Highland White Terriers were bred to hunt otters, foxes and vermin. Westies are cheeky, confident and affectionate characters. They are alert and courageous, making them good guard dogs. They can also be cunning and stubborn, but are totally loyal to their families. They make excellent playmates for children, both indoors and outdoors, because they can withstand rough play. West Highland White Terrier. Okay, fantastic. These are all of our best of breeds from the Terrier group. The Terriers. Plucky personalities. Bold, defiant little characters. The word Terrier comes from the Latin terra, meaning earth. So many of these dogs are bred to go to ground. Comfortable hunting in the burrows and sets and lairs of vermin. So that's where they get their name. But Terriers are... Most of them are vermin hunters. But uh, these bold, defiant personalities, many of them on the tiptoe of expectation, we say in the dog world about some of the terriers in this group, and it's a perfect description of them. Full of life, full of vim, vigour, plucky characters. So our judge, Mr Gatchik, from Slovenia is now about to make his selection of eight terriers. These eight terriers become our four finalists. But to say that your dog was a, um, a group finalist in Melbourne Royal is a wonderful accolade for this animal. Indeed, I wonder who they will be. So terriers, bold, defiant characters, Wonderful personalities, extroverts, cheeky, most of them. So just a few minutes time, we will find out who is our final group winner of our seven groups that will Come back to compete for best in show. Just make sure the, the book is marked. So terriers, as we said, most of them fairly small, close to, low to the ground. All right, we're going to bring them out in alphabetical order. 
Let's bring out exhibit number 311, the Airedale Terrier. Next up, 318, the American Staffordshire Terrier. 371, the Can Terrier. 390, the Fox Terrier Wire. 400, the Jack Russell Terrier. 416, the Kerry Blue Terrier. 485, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And rounding out the top eight, let's bring out 531, the West Highland White Terrier. All right. Please give a round of applause to our retiring terriers as they leave the ring. Congratulations on achieving best of breed. Many of them beating a large number of dogs and doing a wonderful job at representing their breed. So each of these finalists has the chance to move around one more time to impress our judge before we make our decision of who will win the group here at Melbourne Royal 2023. Give a round of applause to the Airedale. The American Stafford. Put your hands together for the can. The Wirehead Fox Terrier. The Jack Russell Terrier. The Kerry Blue Terrier. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And finally, the West Highland White Terrier. All right. Each of these fantastic terriers having the, the opportunity to move around one last time to impress our judge. Who will take out top awards at this year's Royal Show, the Melbourne Royal? The most prestigious dog show in the Southern Hemisphere. Gadgic, all the way from Slovenia, taking the opportunity now to mark the book. He's made his decision. Who will take our top awards here from the Terrier Group? We've judged over 2,700 dogs over these eight days. The winners are returned now to compete for higher awards, and this is what it's all about. To say that your dog is a group winner at Melbourne Royal is a wonderful accolade for that animal. I think it's every exhibitor and breeder's dream to say that that's what they've achieved. I wonder who it will be today. So at this time, a big thank you to Pet Cover and to LifeWise Pet Nutrition who have been a couple of the major sponsors at this year's Royal Show. We thank them for their patronage. All right, sure, we'll make sure the book is marked. All right, this is the final group. We have seven groups of dogs, so 2,700 dogs have now just about to become seven. And then in a few, perhaps an hour's time when we uh, judge best in show, imagine the thrill of saying your dog is the best in show winner at the Melbourne Royal Show. to have four outstanding judges that have come and adjudicated for us today. 
Mr. Gashik, all the way from Slovenia. So we thank him for his judging of the Toy and Terrier groups at this year's Royal. Here we go. Let's bring out exhibit number five, three, why, uh, one, the West Highland White Terrier, who is fourth in group today. Best in Terrier group fourth receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, nine kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. Third in group today. Here we go. Three, nine, zero, the Fox Terrier Wire. Best in Terrier Group 3rd receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, 9 kilograms of premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. All right, here we go. Just two spots remain. Second in group today, 485, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Best in Terrier Group 2nd receives a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal, 9 kilograms of premium dog food supported by LifeWise and an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. All right, this is what it's all about. Who will take out top honours in the uh, Terrier Group today? I'm pleased to tell you it's 371, the Can Terrier. The Best in a Terrier Group receives a trophy in memory of David J.K. Roach, Fermoy, donated by the estate of D.J.K. Roach, 18 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia, flowers donated by Mr. D. Griffiths, and a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. All right, thank you to our retiring finalists, but it's now time to give a huge round of applause to our winners. Let's give it up for their lap of honour, the Can Terrier. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the Wirehead Fox Terrier, and finally the West Highland White Terrier. But the fun's not over because we still have to judge best puppy in the Terrier group. He thought he'd finished. Okay, so all best puppy or breed winners also return to the ring to compete for best in their groups. This is the Terrier group. We are now judging for best puppy in the Terrier group. best puppies in the terrier group are now entering the ring. The border terrier, can terrier, Jack Russell terrier, Kerry blue terrier, Norwich terrier, Scottish Terrier and a soft coated Wheaton Terrier.
Border Terrier, Exhibit 361. Border Terrier. Cairn Terrier, Exhibit 374. Cairn Terrier. Jack Russell Terrier, Exhibit 395. Jack Russell Terrier. Kerry Blue Terrier, Exhibit 412. Kerry Blue Terrier. Norwich Terrier, Exhibit 433. Norwich Terrier. Scottish Terrier, Exhibit 442. Scottish Terrier. Soft coated Wheaton Terrier, Exhibit 471. Soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Okay, these are our best puppy of breed winners from the Terrier group. We have to select four. Four will become our finalists and then we will select one. One for best puppy. And this Terrier will represent that group for puppy in show. We need four of them. So as we said before, this is the final group, the final of seven groups. We've got our seven best in group winners, just our puppy to find. And then we've got some other exciting things. We've got our best brace in show. We have uh, our junior handler competition, which is such a highlight, puppy in show, and then finally best in show. So lots to uh, stay for, lots to enjoy. Um, go and spend some time 
watching the dogs, seeing them on the benches, talking to the exhibitors and the breeders about these wonderful dogs. All right, I think we're ready to go with our finalists. Let's bring out the can, exhibit number th uh, 374. Let's bring out 395, the Jack Russell Terrier. 412, the Kerry Blue Terrier. And finally, 442, the Scottish Terrier. But give a round of applause to our retiring um, Terriers. All right. Each one of these has the opportunity to move around. Last chance to impress our judge before he awards best puppy in the Terrier group. All right. Here we go. This is the Can Terrier. The Jack Russell Terrier. The Kerry Blue Terrier. And the Scottish Terrier. Our judge, Mr. Dr. Gashik, all the way from Slovenia, is now making his selection for best puppy in the Terrier group. It's great. Taken all day to get these uh, winners, but it's been worth it. Some beautiful dogs from all over the country have come to represent their breed, fight it out for top honours here today. Best puppy in group. Let's bring out exhibit number 442. It's the Scottish Terrier. The best puppy in the Terrier group receives a trophy and rosette presented by Melbourne Royal and flowers donated by Mr D Griffiths. Congratulations. Well done. But a round of applause for our retiring finalists, the Can, the Jack Russell Terrier and the Kerry Blue Terrier. And finally, let's put our hands together for our Scottish Terrier, best puppy in the Terrier group at the Melbourne Royal for 2023. Congratulations. Will you also put your hands together for our judge, Mr. Uh, Dr. Gashis, for his judging of the Terrier group here. Thank you so, so much. Okay, every day at the, uh, the Royal Melbourne Show, we have a junior handler competition. Of course, dog showing is for all ages. So people from all ages come and enjoy their dogs. They show their dogs. And it's a wonderful community, the dog community, in terms of they look after each other, we celebrate each other's wins and we're pleased to see each other do well. It's important that our junior handlers are given the opportunity to uh, upskill themselves and develop handling skills. So each day we have uh, a junior handler competition. So over the eight days of breed competition, we have a junior handler that has come through victorious and now it's all about junior showmanship and one of them will be selected as a winner and they um, will receive some amazing prizes and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So in a few moments time, we'll start off with our junior showmanship competition. So the junior showmanship competition, always so exciting for our juniors. So from the age of seven, you can start uh, handling a dog at shows. That's where, how old you have to be. So we have a few different age groups. Three, in fact. 
And there's uh, wonderful opportunities for our handlers. Sometimes if they win, they have the opportunity to travel to all parts of the world and compete and represent Australia. So it's wonderful that our, our junior handlers enjoy looking after dogs and building a rapport with them, handling them and developing their skills. So it's something that they love to do. The dogs love it and the children love it. So it's a great, great opportunity for these handlers to come out and showcase their skills for you this afternoon. We welcome back to the ring Gerardo Pellucci, all the way from Argentina, who is going to judge our junior showmanship competition. So this is the first of our age groups. Our competitors for the junior showmanship final heat in 2023. This is a junior class, seven to under ten years. There we go. These are our seven and under 10 junior showmanship competitors. Each one of them won their heat during the week at the Melbourne Royal Show. So people often ask, what's it about? Each breed of dog has a way that it should be handled or stacked. You know, there's a certain speed that we move certain dogs at. And it's about having the skills to show their particular dog to best advantage. So the judge will ask these exhibitors to move in a certain formation. It might, they might say a triangle or out and back. And we're looking to see how well this exhibitor handles the dog. Do they have a good rapport with the animal? And do they make the most of this dog? So congratulations. Each of these, these children have won their heat. So that's a mighty achievement. So there's lots to think about. You think handling a dog might be easy. It's not quite so easy as it looks. So remembering that they want to see that dog ran in straight lines, that we want to see the, uh, the handler making the most of the dog, moving it at the correct speed. So the first competitor had a Saluki and the second competitor, a Bob. 
Boston Terrier, two very different dogs and the way that you present them requires different skills and an understanding of the breed. So that's part of what the judge is looking for today. was said before. These handlers are between seven and ten years of age for many. It's the start of their handling career. Junior showmanship. Heats of the junior showmanship classes are held every day of confirmation judging. Entry is free and the children can continue to complete until they qualify. The daily class winners receive a $25 gift voucher, an armband exhibit number holder, 12 months free junior membership of Dogs Victoria, other gifts and passes to return to compete today. Every other participant during the course of the show receives a show bag. Every competing finalist also receives a rosette armband presented by Melbourne Royal. Junior Showmanship most gratefully acknowledge the support from Dogs Victoria, Platinum Pet Warehouse, Junior Kennel Club of Victoria, Jenny Skulak, Melissa Frosch, Fran Parsons, Matthew and Susan Markham, Gail Knowles, Fiona Ellis, Sharon Lynn, James and Louise Weeks, Shani Quinn, Debbie Parker, Christina John, Anne-Marie Hearn, Amy Peterson, Jenny Bowes, Christine Baker, Anne O'Connor, Marissa Seraph, Teresa Liss and Ingrid Matsky Photography. So these handlers... demonstrating their understanding of each breed and how it should be handled. This is a can terrier. Each breed should be moved at a certain pace. The judge gives clear direction, so it's very important that they listen to what's been asked of them and that they demonstrate that they have some kind of relationship or rapport with the dog. Next up is a standard poodle. And you can see here, there's a great understanding that these handlers have, knowing the correct speed, the pace that the dog is shown at. Each breed of dog has its own little quirks and person, um, little things that are important. So the handlers become very aware of this, the way you show 
a poodle is very different to the way that you show a Boston Terrier. And we've seen both of these breeds out here today. But as you can see, many of them, even though they're young, highly accomplished, it's what they do most weekends. They turn up to the shows and enjoy this junior handler competition. And it's taken many of them to different parts of the world, such as Crufts in England and to Westminster in New York. This is an American Staffordshire Terrier. So even though young handler, they've got great control of these dogs. And this is our final competitor from the uh, 7 to under 10 junior showmanship competition handed in an Australian Shepherd. All right, so they return to the ring. And unfortunately, that's the nature of competition. Just one will go through to the next round of competition. So the three age groups, there'll be three winners and they'll battle it out for best overall handler. But as you can see, these handlers doing a terrific job presenting these dogs to perfection. So our judge today, Mr. Pellucci, all the way from Argentina, of course, is an excellent handler and presenter of dogs himself. So he's no stranger to the show ring in terms of being a great handler and presenter of dogs. These two ex exhibitors being put through their paces before we make a selection of who will uh, win this 7 to under 10 age bracket. Give them a round of applause. They are doing a mighty job. So who will be victorious? As you can see, they have a, num a name, a number tag on with a J and a number afterwards. I wonder who it will be. We have some prizes to give out as well. So we're just after... And we're just going to give out one award, unfortunately. But the judges are 
putting these two handlers to their paces. Come on, a round of applause for them. So just one prize today. So it's really important that these junior handlers listen to what the judge wants from them. Easier said than done when you're under pressure, isn't it? You've ready to mark, to mark the book? All right. Let's bring out these uh, trophies. So they receive, of course, some wonderful trophies. But that's not really what it's about. It's about the participation in making sure that you're upskilling yourself in being a wonderful handler of dogs and that you're able to handle a variety of breeds. All right, here we go. Taking out the 7 to under 10 age group is J6, the American Stafford. The 7 to under 10 age group winner receives a rosette donated by Junior Kennel Club of Victoria, a $300 cash prize donated by Platinum Pet Warehouse, a photo donated by Ingrid Matchkey Photography and a trophy donated by Melbourne Royal. But of course, it's been a part of it, so... A birdie beetle, beetle show bag is the order of the day. So well done. You did a mighty, mighty job. Congratulations to all of these uh, junior showmanship competitors. Are you ready to take yours around? J6, all right. Off you go. Please put your hands together for competitor number J6. J6 returns later in the day to compete for best overall showmanship Competitor, thank you. You may leave the ring. Well done. Nice job. We're now bringing the second age group. The, entering the ring now are our junior showmanship final heat 2023 junior class 10 to under 13 years. J1 was handling a Jack Russell Terrier. We have a Doberman, a Border Terrier, a miniature poodle so far. This is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. with a Siberian Husky.
So the first of our competitors handling a Jack Russell Terrier. As you can see, our judge asking for different formations, often letters of the al alphabet actually, that they are to draw out with their dogs. It's very important they know where to stand, not coming between the judge and the dog. But of course they know this. So our judge will probably give each of these children a slightly different instruction, so it's important that they listen for what's required of them. So this is our competitor number two for the Doberman. As you can see, some dogs are presented on the table and some on the ground. Of course, it's important our handler knows which is which. Of course, it's all about the occasion. And of course, uh, these junior handlers know it's about putting your best foot forward. So lots of care taken with their presentation, their hair, their outfits, how they've got their dog presented. Trying to capture the attention of the judge. So most of these junior handlers would go to sh uh, shows most weekends. In fact, we uh, often have many generations of people that show dogs, children whose parents show dogs and their grandparents show dogs. So it is a great family pastime. And often the children take over the breeding of the dogs, of their parents and their grandparents. So it's a great legacy that they take on. This is our handler with a poodle. Of course, a poodle is perhaps not the easiest dog to handle. Making sure the lead and the hair is all right so they know that. This is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Thank you. 
So as you can see, competition both for boys and girls. And that's the wonderful thing about the dog world. People from all walks of, of life showing their dogs. That's the one thing they have in common, their love of dogs. This is a Siberian husky. This is the last of our intermediate age handlers to show off their skills. They return now and we'll make a placing. A round of applause for all of these handlers. They have done a mighty job to have won their heat throughout the week of the Melbourne Royal. Now fighting it out for a first place. of these junior handlers being put through their paces and they really do have such incredible skill and handling a dog <laughs> I can guarantee it's not the easiest thing in the world to do a mighty mighty job and of course it's not really just about the prizes, but there is a fantastic prize. It's a travel voucher, and hopefully our junior showmanship winner will use this voucher to travel to a dog show that they've always wanted to go to. That would be fabulous. So our judge today, Gerardo Pellucci, of course, an excellent presenter and handler of dogs himself. So wonderful to have his expert opinion. All right, put your hands together as they complete their final lap before we decide... Who goes on to battle it out in the overall final for our junior showmanship competition? Unfortunately, there's just one, even though they are all winners. I know we say that, but I do mean it. They have done a terrific job and are wonderful ambassadors for the dog world. I think Mr. Pellucci is finding it hard to decide because of such great skill and talent. So well done. <laughs> All right, we've marked the book. Congratulations, it's M2. Junior Showmanship, 10 to under 13 years winner. Receives a rosette donated by Junior Kennel Club of Victoria. 
A $300 cash prize donated by Platinum Pet Warehouse. A photo donated by Ingrid Matchkey Photography. And a trophy donated by the Melbourne Royal. And of course, everyone else gets a Birdie Beetle show back. All right, congratulations to our finalists as they leave the ring. But put your hands together for exhibitor M2. M2 returns in a few moments' time to compete for best overall handler. And finally, let's bring out the big guns, the oldest age group. Now entering the ring are our junior showmanship final heat for 2023, junior class 13 to under 19 years. All right, so there are eight entrants here today. Each day of breed judging we had a junior handler heat. Each one of these competitors was victorious and we're now judging the senior age group. As you can see, each dog has a unique way of it being stacked or presented. And these junior showmanship competitors know this. And it's clear that this judge has judged many junior showmanship competitions before. He'll put them through their paces. This competitor has a, a whippet. A whippet is a sight hound. Dogs of elegant proportions. So our judge asks for certain formations to be drawn out on their the arena, it may be a letter of the alphabet or a triangle, just depends what they ask of the, um, the handler. That's it, a round of applause for number one.
This is competitor number two with a can terrier. A natural, rustic, hardy little breed from Scotland. So it's very important that these handlers are very precise in what's been asked for them in terms of taking the dog in straight lines and moving the dog at the correct pace, showing the dog off to its best advantage. Next up is handler number three with the Kayshund. The Kayshund is a, a Dutch barge dog, a sure-footed dog that uh, assisted on the barges to make sure that they were rid of vermin but also to be a good watchdog. A round of applause for this competitor. Big star power. Handler has a Petit Basset Griffon Vendion, a short legged hound from France. A round of applause for our competitor with the PBGV. Next up is uh, a junior handler with a miniature poodle.
So congratulations to this competitor with a miniature poodle. Next up. Our hands up with the Weimaraner. The Grey Ghost, as they're sometimes referred to. A dog from Viam, Germany. A general hunt point retrieve utility gun dog. A round of applause for our handler with the Weimaraner. Next up, another one of our finalists. This time handling a Jack Russell Terrier. Jack Russell Terrier, plucky little soul. So it's all quite in intricate and tricky. The handler knows which side of the dog is that's to be on, sometimes on the left, sometimes on the right. But the judge gives them definite instructions about what formation they are to draw out on the floor of the arena with their dog. Next up, a breed you might not be so aware of, will be familiar with, this is the Leon Burger. An imposing, impressive dog, the coloration of a lion. This is the Leon Burger. This is the final handler. All finalists are returning to the ring for a little more of a workout before we decide who will be victorious in this third and senior age bracket. So each of these finalists being asked to move around to show the dog off to the best of its ability, move the dog at the correct pace, have the dog looking at its very, very best.
The competition's not over yet. Keep your applause going. Encourage them on. As we said, these handlers, for many of them, it's their favourite thing turning up to the dog shows and making sure that they uh, are prepared and ready to handle their dogs. Many of them handle many different breeds for their friends and their family. As we said before, dog showings are a wonderful pastime for people of all ages. and Sometimes when some exhibitors are a little bit older, they need some junior handlers to assist them. So, of course, it's a great service that they do for members of the, the dog world. As we said before, Mr. Pellucci, an outstanding exhibitor of dogs himself, terriers and schnauzers, great presenter and wonderful handler. So what better choice than to have him adjudicate at this year's Junior Showmanship competition? Unfortunately, we just have to have one, Mr. Pellucci. Just one. But of course, they are all winners for me, that was a great example of excellent showmanship and great prowess in the ring. Okay, here we go. Let's bring out S3. Junior Showmanship, 13 to under 19 years. Receives a rosette donated by Junior Kennel Club of Victoria, a $300 cash prize donated by Platinum Pet Warehouse, a photo donated by Ingrid Matchkey Photography, and a trophy donated by Melbourne Royal. So congratulations, S3. We'll get you to do your lap of honour in a minute. But also, well done to everyone else. You were victorious in winning your heat throughout the week. Thank you for coming back. You did a grand job indeed. Give them a round of applause as they exit the ring, but also a round of applause for S3. Well done. Congratulations. But the fun's not over. <laughs> Each of our three age group winners return to the ring to battle it out for best overall handler. So a seven and under 10, 10 to 13, and then over 13 to 18 years of age, they are all returning to the ring to fight it out for best overall junior showmanship award winner. Here they come. Please give them a round of applause, each of our age group finalists and now battling it out for Best Junior Showmanship Award winner.
As you can see, they are all over it. They know exactly what's asked of them. Of course, in the dog world, we are very proud of our handlers. I think we're ready to go. Let's mark the book. One of these fabulous handlers will emerge victorious and take out this year's 2023 Junior Showmanship Award. We also welcome to the ring Jennifer Skulak, who's so generous and kind and wonderful. Let's take you round to the shade first, but before we'll do some... Um before we do the presentations. We also thank Peter Hitchner, who's here to present um, the rosettes. Please thank him, the patron of Dogs Victoria, and also our CEO of Dogs Victoria. Thank you, Jason Eggleston, for coming and being a part of this fantastic competition. All right, here we go. The 20, the winner of the 2023 Junior Showmanship for Melbourne Royal is, it's S3. The overall winner, Junior Showmanship, receives a $1,000 travel voucher donated by Ms J Skulak, a $250 gift voucher from Dogs Victoria, and a rosette donated by Mrs T Liss, in memory of Naomi Liss. Fantastic. Please, thank you to Jason and Jenny and thank you, Peter Hitchner, for coming and being part of the presentations. But more importantly, will you give a round of applause, please, to our judge, Mr. Rado Pellucci. Right, of course it's not over yet. We need our lap of honour. Put your hands together for S3, J6, M2. Good job. What's happening now? We just have a five minute break, so please don't go away. And if you're enjoying the live streaming, perhaps time to get a cup of tea and come back in about five minutes for our baby and our brace and our puppy and our best in show awards.
would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and the Aboriginal elders of the other communities who may be here today. I would like to introduce our VIPs and sponsors. We have Brad Jenkins, Chief Executive Officer of Melbourne Royal, Peter Hitchner, the Dogs Victoria patron, Helen Head, wife of the light Graham Head, past president of Dogs Victoria and long-standing dog section committee member. The major sponsors present are Bill Weardrowski of Flyfire's Pet Nutrition, a major sponsor and official food supplier, Susan Buffioni of Pet Cover, a major sponsor and general special status sponsor, Jason Eggleton, Chief Executive Officer of Dogs Victoria, a sponsor and supporter of the Junior Showmanship Competition and Total Animal Logistics. We'd also like to acknowledge our four international judges, Mr. Galko, Jelko Gazik from Slovenia, Dr. George Tezix from Hungary, Mr. Gerardo Paolucci from Argentina, and Mrs. Annika Altvit Mo from Sweden. I'd like now to introduce the Chief Executive Officer of Melbourne Royal, Mr. Brad Jenkins. Well, good afternoon and uh, thank you for joining us for the, this wonderful event, the best in show at the 2023 Melbourne Royal All Breeze Championship Show. There's nothing like the thrill of winning a coveted Melbourne Royal Blue Ribbon and in particular best in show. And winning best in show this year will mean more than ever before because we at Melbourne Royal are proudly ce celebrating 175 years. And it's not every day that an organisation or an event celebrates 175 years, and this year, Melbourne Royal is celebrating this remarkable milestone. And it's also 140 years since the Melbourne Royal show was first held on this site here at Ascot Vale. And it's also a remarkable amount of history with the dog shows as well, because it was the first dog show was first held in 1872, which was 151 years ago. But the longevity and success of the Melbourne Royal is built on great people and those who have been involved in the past, present and will in the future, particularly the wonderful volunteers that, who assist us plan and deliver the Melbourne Royal show. And this year we proudly had a record number of volunteers involved. More than 1,100 have helped us in an incredible, incredible effort, effort to deliver the show this year. And I particularly want to thank members of our Melbourne Royal Dogs Committee for their tireless work that they do, not only just over the 11 days of the show, but right throughout the year. And could I ask that you give each of them a huge round of applause when I announce their name? And first off the bat is Gerald Wilcox, the committee chair. Uh, Judy Oliver, the vice chair. Along with committee members Tyron Atkinson, My favourite, Lois Wilkinson, who uh, is going to retire after this year's show. And Lois, not only uh, have you been a great servant to the Melbourne Royal and the, the dog show, but you've been a great friend as well. So thanks very much, Lois. Uh, Heather Tilly. Anthony Price. Cara Wilkinson. And Christina John. We're incredibly grateful for their support, commitment and passion to help maximise the appeal and success of the Melbourne Royal All Breeds Championship show for all involved. So please, one more round of applause for the committee. Also, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank the immediate past president of Dogs Committee, Andrew Burt. Thank you, Andrew, again, for all your service. And another member of the committee who retired earlier this year was Clive Makepeace. And, and Clive, his involvement was over decades. So again, Clive, uh, thank you very much. 
The prestige of the Melbourne Royal All Breeds Championship show is the calibre of the judges. And by all accounts, the panel of judges this year has been outstanding. And many have travelled around for many hours across the world. In, and uh, I want to thank them particularly for coming out and being part of this wonderful event. And first of all, Anika, thank you. Zelko. Gerardo, Yogi, Simon, Kim, Mary Beth, Barry and Jenny who aren't here this afternoon. Please put your hands together for the judges. I want to talk about the volunteers. We have a wonderful band of stewards who get involved here and I've got to a huge shout out to all the volunteers who volunteer their valuable time to be involved. So please put your hands together, all the stewards have helped out. For the... And importantly, it wouldn't be a Melbourne Royal Albury's Championship show without entries. And I thank everyone who has entered this year and trust you've had an enjoyable experience. We're fortunate, we also receive wonderful support from our valued sponsors and I want to thank again I know you've done that, Gail, but I thank them again. LifeWise, Pet Nutrition, Pet Cover, Dog News Australia, Dogs Victoria, and Total Animal Logistics. And also, while I'm here, on the first day of the show, we made a Melbourne Royal made a wonderful tribute to a gentleman who has been involved with Channel Nine for 50 years. And, and not only has he been involved with Channel Nine for 50 years, but he's been a wonderful support of the Melbourne Rural Show and in particular the All Bridge Championship Show. Most days I think he comes out by train but he meets and greets thousands of people who come to the show and he's a wonderful supporter of our dog show and that's Peter Hitchener. So great to see you Peter. And finally, I'm very proud and very thankful of my team that put the Melbourne Rural Show on and there's a lot of time and effort goes into putting the show on and I want to thank Kai and Holly as part of the team for their work that they do. They did a fantastic job this year and there's considerable thought and planning goes into it in delivering the show, so thank you. The last thing is, good luck to the competitors. Should be, a, should be fantastic. Look forward to watching and look forward to seeing who takes home the coveted Melbourne Royal Blue Ribbon for Best in Show for 2023. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We'd just like to say thank you to Brad on mentioning all of our volunteers, our judges, our stewards and our committee people. I'd like to introduce Sharon Buffioni from Pet Cover to say a word or two. Thank you very much, everybody. Pet Cover is proud to sponsor this wonderful event. I'd like also to thank um, all of the judges, the committee members, the volunteers. Um, absolutely wonderful day here today. Um, and Gail, thank you for having me along. Um, that's all for me. Short and sweet is good. <laughs> thank you. Short and sweet is very good. I might be covering what Brad has already mentioned, but we need to say on behalf of Melbourne Royal and especially the Dog Section Committee, we want to thank all the exhibitors for their entries and the excellent manner in which they've conducted themselves. This has really been an outstanding show in terms of judging and competition. Over the past eight days, we've seen excellent competition and great sportsmanship. I'd also like to acknowledge our competition coordinator, Kai Biroff Murphy, and her assistant, Holly McNamara. They've been a pleasure to work with, and we all congratulate Kai and Holly on their wonderful effort. Secondly, I wish to thank the Dog Section Committee for their outstanding, outstanding commitment to this event. Without their support and enormous efforts, we would not be here celebrating this wonderful event today. Our wonderful stewards, they are the ones who make the event such a success on a day-to-day -day basis, providing support for our judges, organising our exhibitors and ensuring that some 3,000 dogs have been judged over the past eight days. 
and we owe them enormous thanks. Would you like to show your appreciation again for them, please? And I crave your indulgence to mention a few things here. I'd also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the contribution of members of the dog section committee who are stepping away. Brad mentioned them, but I'd like to go over it again. Clive Makepeace joined the committee in 2005 and took control of the Action Dog section. He mentored our previous Action Dog show manager, present, beg your pardon, Heather Tilly, and retired from the committee earlier this year. Lois Wilkinson joined the committee in 2003 and has been trophy manager since then, is mentoring her daughter Kira, who will assume this responsibility. Lois will retire after this show. Andrew Burt joined the committee in 2010 after being a steward since 2008. He assumed the role of chair in 2015 and is hugely responsible for the success that this Melbourne Royal Show currently enjoys. Although he has resigned from the committee, we enjoy his contribution and experience to guide us on. Could you please again show your appreciation for the huge contribution these people have made to Melbourne Royal? Lastly, but most importantly, I want to applaud the efforts of our four international judges. Over the past week, these four judges have worked tirelessly with professionalism and a caring, studious approach while evaluating our dogs. All four have been a pleasure to work with and please put your hands together again to congratulate Zalco, George, Gerardo and our best in show judge today, Annika. I would ask you now to all be upstanding as Imogen Spendlove sings the Australian National Anthem. Thank you, Imogen. That was absolutely beautiful. And now we continue on to our Best in Show program and we wish all exhibits the very best as they compete for the ultimate award. Thank you for your attention. Now about to get underway with the general specials program at this year's Royal Melbourne Show. Zilko Gash is going to judge our best, best brace competition, so please make him to the ring. He's accompanied by our chair of the dog section, Gail Wilcock. Thank you, Zilko, for coming and judging our best brace in show. So the brace competition is two dogs that work together as a team along with their handler. Each day there was a brace competition, so... Finalists return to the ring. Let's make them welcome a team, a brace of Saluki, Sky Terriers, Kazons, Australian Shepherds, 
Shih Tzus, Deerhound, So it's important that the dogs, hopefully they have a, a very similar look about them, but they move in a unis, unified kind of way, that they work together as a team. So if you've ever get, uh, tried to have two dogs walk together on the lead in a precise and exact way, you would know how difficult it is. This is a brace of Saluki. So we're now judging for Melbourne Raw, best brace in show. Saluki. Sight hound from the Middle East, built on elegant, graceful lines. Next up is a brace of Sky Terriers from the Isle of Sky, as the name suggests. These dogs are long, low, and level, but still very powerful for their size. A hunter traditionally of Badger. This is a brace of Sky Terriers. Congratulations, put your hands together for this brace of Sky Terriers. Next up is a, a brace of Kazons, the Dutch barge dog. So with these unique saddle markings and his keen expression, this profuse double coat, the tail up over the back, Sure-footed and able to assist on the barges in Europe to rid them of vermin, but also be as a watchdog. These are Kazons. Followed by a brace of Australian shepherds. We can't lay claim to this breed. Australian in name, but really American in development. They come in a variety of colours, but they are robust and are agile at the same time. A herding breed, Australian Shepherds. Next up is a brace of uh, Shih Tzus. Short in foreface, strongly built under this body with the Crowning glory, of course, is this profuse coat, the tail carried up over the back and the hair tied up into a top knot. One of the glamour breeds of dogdom. The move with an arrogant carriage. This is a brace of Shih Tzus. And finally... A brace of Deerhound, a Scottish breed, resembling the elegant lines of a greyhound, but with this fantastic shaggy weather resistant coat. This is the Deerhound. So, in a few moments' time, we will judge best brace in show at the Melbourne Royal Show. Who will it be? It seems that we've called for the book to be marked. Just one brace in show will be awarded today. All right. Best brace in show 
Let's bring out two, five, four, two. It's the Kazons. So congratulations. A round of applause for our retiring braces. Well done to the Salukis, the Sky Terriers, the Australian Shepherds, the Shih Tzus and the Deerhound. You ready to take the round for a lap of honour? Please put your hands together. Lap of honour for our best bracing show, the Kazons. The best bracing show receives $500 cash prize and rosette supported by pet cover, 18 kilos of premium dog food supported by LifeWise, advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia, trophy sash flowers presented by Melbourne Royal. But will you please also put your hands together for Dr Gashix as he's judging of our best bracing show. Thank you for adjudicating that this year's Melbourne Royal. We now move on to our best baby puppy in show. Would you make welcome to the ring Dr George Teshich all the way from Hungary. He's accompanied by Gail Wilcock, the chair of the dog section of the Melbourne Royal. So thank you for judging best baby in show. Each day a baby came forth from the classes. So for each day of judging there's a baby and they are now going to battle it out for best baby in show. We have from day one, the Airedale Terrier, the Irish Setter, the Samoyed, a Kazond, Standard Poodle, American Staffordshire Terrier, a Collie Ruff, and a miniature pincer. So as we were saying before, of these baby puppies, for many, it's their first experience in the show ring, somewhere between three and six months of age. Each day, just one baby was sent forth by our four judges and they're now battling it out for best baby puppy in show. On day one was the Airedale Terrier. The Airedale Terrier, referred to as the king of the terriers, one of the largest terriers. This lovely harsh coat and these black and tan markings. This is the Airedale Terrier. Round of applause for the baby puppy Airedale Terrier. On day two, an Irish setter came through as best baby of the day. The Irish setter, always red in colour, racy in build, full of quality. His lovely almond shaped eyes. Dog built on elegant lines. This is the Irish setter. We can give you a little bit of a football score if you're interested at the moment. Collingwood, 37. The Lions, 50. Whereabouts, what 
week we're about to watch Hearts of the Rebels. the second quarter. But that's only just after the second quarter. Second quarter, 37 to 50. 37 points to Collingwood. 50 to the Lions. Looking at the Irish setup. Always this lovely red coloration. Racy, full of quality. Built on elegant lines. Long in neck and lever. A round of applause, please, for the Irish setter. On day three, a Samoyed was triumphant. Samoyed, a dog from the Arctic conditions of Siberia. A dog used to herd reindeer, sometimes used for his sledding ability. Generally white in colour, but they have, may have cream or biscuit markings. This is the Samoyed, the smiling Samoyed with their lovely pigmentation around their eyes, ears and nose. This is a Samoyed. Day four was a Kays hunt. Little Dutch barge dog with their unique saddle markings, this lovely grey colour. This keen foxy expression, these small erect little ears, brisk and powerful on the move. Tail always up over the back. This is the Kays hunt. Round of applause for the Kaysland. Day five saw a standard poodle victorious. A poodle originally a water retrieving dog, but now really a companion animal. They come in a variety of sizes and colours. This is the standard size, the largest. But dogs really ever so stylish. This lovely, wicked expression, a light on their feet, tail up, head up. This is the standard poodle. A round of applause for the standard poodle. Day six, we saw an American Staffordshire Terrier emerge triumphant. One of the bull breeds, as his name suggests, developed in the United States. Powerful and strong, yet uh, move with great efficiency. Slight spring to their step. This is the American Staffordshire Terrier.
put your hands together for the American Staffordshire Terrier. Day seven. A collie rough came through as the winner. The collie, a Scottish breed made famous by Lassie, but once described as the most beautiful dog in the world, but it's a dog that's asked to stand with great impassive beauty. They have these lovely long, clean, lean heads, the ears that are held back, and this profuse double coat. This is the collie ruff. Great to see lots of people vying for position, getting their seat ready for our best puppy in show and our best in show awards. If you've joined us on the uh, live streaming, you're very welcome. Please enjoy the dog judging. Put your hands together for the Collie Ruff. And on day eight, day one was King of the Terriers, but day eight was King of the Toys. This is the miniature pincer. As his name suggests, he is a miniature version of pincher style dogs. Outgoing, energetic little characters with his lovely wedge shaped head and wedge shaped body. They move with a precise hackneyed gait. See this most unique and distinct way of moving of the hackney gate of the miniature pincer. Put your hands together for the miniature pincer. Unfortunately, just one baby can be selected. We're going to, we're now judging for best baby in show. As we said, eight days of breed competition, eight winners came. Fourth as Victorious, the Airedale, the Irish Setter, the Samoyed, the Kazon, the Standard Poodle, the American Staffordshire, the Collie Ruff and the Miniature Pincer. So each dog having a chance to move around one last time to impress our judge, Mr. Tesic, all the way from Hungary. So baby puppies, somewhere between three and six months of age, super cute and such lovely babies. I wonder who it will be. Our judge taking the opportunity to grad congratulate each and every winner here.
All right. Unfortunately, we can only have one winner today. They're all winners, of course. Many of them beating many babies to take out Best Baby at this year's 2023 Melbourne Royal. So the book has been marked. Let's bring out exhibit number 309, the Airedale Terrier. Best Baby Puppy in Show receives a $500 cash prize and rosette supported by Pet Cover, 18 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, and advertising vouchers supported by Dog News Australia, and trophy session flowers presented by Melbourne Royal. Okay, a round of applause for our retiring babies. But it's time for a round of applause for the lap of honour for the Airedale Terrier, our best baby puppy in show at the Melbourne Royal 2023. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Tesich, for your judging at this year's show. We do appreciate it so much. A round of applause, please, for our judge. The uh, chair of the uh, dog committee at the Melbourne Royal, Gail Wilcock, accompanies our judge into the ring. Will you please make welcome Gerardo Pellucci all the way from Argentina. He now judges best puppy in show. You're very welcome. The ring is yours. First into the ring, representing the toy group, please welcome the Pomeranian, the Scottish Terrier, the Pointer, the Whippet, the Collie Ruff, the Bernese Mountain Dog, and finally the Dalmatian. The Pomeranian. Pomeranians are typically a very friendly and lively breed of dog. They love to be around their owners and are known to be protective of them. Poms have a double coat. The outer coat is long, straight and harsh in texture, while the undercoat is soft, thick and short. Scottish Terrier. Scottish Terriers were originally bred to hunt and kill vermin on farms and to hunt badgers and foxes in the highlands of Scotland. They are a rugged breed with a wiry outer coat and a soft, dense undercoat. The breed is known to be independent and self-assured, playful, intelligent and has been nicknamed the Die Hard because of its rugged nature and endless determination. They are well known for being a playing piece 
in the board game Monopoly. Pointer. The pointer traces back from 300 years of English history. It is used to catch rabbits and birds, and it should be athletic and graceful. The immediate impression should be of a compact, hard-driving hunting dog. Always alert and ready to let go. Pointers are affectionate and loyal. Pointer. Whippet. The whippet was bred to hunt by sight, coursing game in open areas at high speeds. They are a sight hound breed that originated in England. Whippets are generally quiet and gentle dogs and may be content to spend much of the day resting. They are primarily racing dogs. They are the fastest dog of their weight. Whippet. Collie Ruff. The Collie originated in the 1800s as a herding dog in Scotland. They are famous as a lassie dog from movies and books. They have a very characteristic head which resembles a blunt wedge. They need consistent care and grooming to keep their beautiful coat in good condition. Rough Collies can compete in dog agility trials, obedience, fly ball, tracking and herding events. They have also been known to work as search and rescue dogs, as therapy dogs and guide dogs. Collie Rough. Bernese Mountain Dog. From Switzerland, Bernese Mountain Dogs accompanied the Alpine herders and dairymen in the Swiss Alps. They were general farm dogs, but they were also used to pull carts. They are large, heavy dogs with a distinctive tri-coloured coat, black with white chest and rust-coloured markings. The Bernese can have calm temperaments and like to be with their family. Bernese Mountain Dog. The Dalmatian. The Dalmatian has a mysterious past and were often seen with bands of gypsies or trotting along, alongside carriages with horses. They are the only spotted dog and have black or liver spots. They are a mos mascot for fire stations and have been used as service dogs. Dalmatians have an affinity with horses and love to run with their family. They are loyal and loving companions and are eager to please their owners. Dalmatian. 
how wonderful you can see each of these best puppy and group winners behind in front of their boards for their re uh, respective groups. Each dog having a chance to move around, make a great impression on our judge, Mr. Palucci, who is now judging for best puppy in show. That's it, put your hands together for the Pomeranian. The Scottish Terrier. The Pointer. The Whippet. The Collie Ruff. Bernie's Mountain Dog. And finally, the Dalmatian. Just one award. You have to make a decision, Mr. Pellucci. Who will be best puppy in show? Give them a round of applause, please, and to our judge. So, he's called for the book. He's made his decision. We invite our guests to make these presentations into the ring as well. We're about to judge Best Puppy in Show at Melbourne Royal. All right. Let's bring out, for best puppy in show, exhibit number 944. It's the pointer. The best puppy in show receives $1,000 cash prize and rosette supported by pet cover. 18 kilo premium dog food supported by LifeWise. Advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia. A rosette supported by Our Dogs Newspaper UK. A trophy presented by the Melbourne Royal Dog Section Committee in memory of Mr uh, Bob Bell. A trophy sash flowers presented by Melbourne Royal and a rosette donated by Mr Peter Hitchner and Peter Manzaris in memory of Mr uh, Bob Bell. All right, while we're getting a, um, a photo, let's give a round of applause to our retiring um, puppy group winners. Well done, congratulations to the Palmeranian, the Terrier, the Hound, the Working Dog group winner, the Utility, and our non-sporting puppy in group. All right. Are you ready to do your lap of honour? Yes. All right. All right, a lap of honour, please. Let's give it up for exhibit number 444, four, no, 944, four, sorry. The pointer who is best puppy in show. And leaving the ring for the last time at this year's show, at the Melbourne Royal. Give it up for Mr. Pellucci, all the way from Argentina, our judge today. So we come to the final part of the day, the culmination of eight days judging. 
we have seven group winners here that are going to compete for Best in Show. For the last time, can you give a very warm welcome to our Best in Show judge, Mrs. Annika. from Sweden. And now our dogs are entering the ring. We start with our toy winner, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Followed by our Terrier winner, the Can Terrier. And our Gun Dog winner, the English Springer Spaniel. Followed by the Hound winner, the Basset Hound. And our Working Dog winner, the Australian Shepherd. Our Utility winner, the Samoyed. And last but not least, our non-sporting winner, the Miniature Poodle. Please give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> Mrs. Annika Oldfeet Mo of Sweden is now going to examine each of these exhibits and compare them to the breed standard, having a look at the quality of head, colour, coat, movement and body. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is a descendant from the toy spaniels that were ladies' pets in Tudor times. King Charles II was seldom seen without his spaniels at his feet. They are known for their beautiful temperaments and are affectionate, playful and tolerant of children, making them excellent family pets. They come in four colours, Blenheim, which is chestnut and white, tricolour, which is black, white and tan, black and tan and ruby, which is solid red. Cairn Terrier. The Cairn Terrier originated in Scotland and was bred to flush out rats and rodents which hid in, hid in rocky piles. The Cairn has a double layered water resistant coat and come in a variety of different colours. They are adventurous, intelligent, loyal and love to dig. They love to go walking with their owners too. Cairn Terrier. English Springer Spaniel. The English Springer Spaniel was traditionally bred for flushing and re retrieving game. They are friendly, eager to please, quick to learn and willing to obey. Springer Spaniels are commonly used as sniffer dogs and search and rescue dogs.
English Springer Spaniel. Basset Hound. The Basset Hound is a French scent hound, originally bred for the purpose of hunting rabbits and hare. Their sense of smell for tracking is exceptional. They are large, solid and long, with curved sabre tails held high over their long backs. Also known for its hanging skin structure, it can cause the face to occasionally look sad. Their trailing ears, which along with the bloodhound are the longest of any breed, help track the scent of what they are tracking. The Basset Hound is a friendly dog to people and other pets and makes an excellent companion for children. Basset Hound. Australian Shepherd. The Australian Shepherd is a breed of herding dog that was developed on ranches in the Western United States. Called an Aussie, they acquired their name because some of these dogs were used to herd Australian sheep. They continue to work as stock dogs and compete in herding trials. The breed has an eagerness to please and are highly regarded for their skills in obedience. Their tail is a hallmark of the breed. Some Aussies are born with naturally bobbed tails, while others have a long tail. They are medium-sized breed of solid build and are highly intelligent, incredibly energetic, people-loving dogs. Australian Shepherd. <laughs> Samoid. The nomadic reindeer herders bred the Samoid to help with the herding and to pull sleds when they moved. Samoids are excellent companions, especially for small children or even other dogs and they remain playful right into old age. When Samoids become bored, however, they may begin to dig. Samoid. <laughs> poodle miniature. The poodle comes in three types, miniature, standard and toy. They were used as a water retrieving dog. The poodle is very active, intelligent and elegant. It's squarely built and well proportioned. The breed has a keen sense of instinctive behaviour, in particular marking and hunting drivers are more readily observable than in most other breeds. Poodles have a single layered coat. The texture ranges from coarse and woolly to soft and wavy and requires ongoing attention to maintain its striking appearance. miniature. Our judge, Mrs Annika Altvidmo of Sweden, has gone over each of the seven group winning exhibits and they will now have a last chance to show themselves as they head around the ring for the last time. We have our toy group winner, the Cavalier, Terrier winner, 
the Can Terrier, the Gun Dog, English Springer Spaniel, the Hound winner, the Basset Hound, followed by the Working Dog winner, the Australian Shepherd, the Utility winner, the Samoyed, and the non-sporting winner, the Miniature Poodle. Mrs. Alvin Mo is now going to congratulate herself, each of the seven winners. And let's take this opportunity to thank our judges again, the four judges who have sent you these magnificent exhibits. Please, let's thank our entire judging panel. The suspense is building. Over the eight days of breed judging, our judges have adjudicated and made their decisions over almost 2,600 dogs, which would be the largest entry that has occurred in Australia this year. And these are the best of the best. Okay, it's time for our trophies, the trophy presenters to bring out the awards to stand at each of the four placings. And we will be announcing our winners from best in show fourth back to best in show first. As we now are about to make our announcements, one last cheer and congratulations to all seven, the best of the best at the 2023 Melbourne Royal Show. And we'll start with fourth place. In fourth place, please bring forward exhibit number 371, the Can Terrier. Best in Show 4th receives a $250 cash prize in rosette supported by Pet Cover, 9 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise and a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Okay, and now for our third place, determined by Mrs Annika Altveit Mo, let's congratulate Exhibit number 635, the English Springer Spaniel. Best in Show 3rd receives a $500 cash prize in rosette supported by Pet Cover, 9 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise and a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. And now we're almost at the pointy end and we're going to announce Best in Show number 2. And for Best in Show number 2, Please bring forward Exhibit 2384, the Miniature Poodle. Best in Show 2nd receives a $1,000 cash prize and rosette supported by Pet Cover, 9 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia and a trophy and sash presented by Melbourne Royal. Okay, and we're there. After eight days of judging, almost 2,600 dogs, our judge, Mrs. Annika Altveit Mo from Sweden, has chosen as her best in show at the 2023 Melbourne Royal, exhibit number 1960, the Samoyed. Best in show first receives a $2,000 cash prize in rosette supported by Pet Cover, 18 kilogram premium dog food supported by LifeWise, an advertising voucher supported by Dog News Australia, a $200 value felt artwork donated by Kathy Grass, a rosette supported by Our Dogs 
Newspaper UK, trophy sash flowers presented by Melbourne Royal and a rosette donated by our judge, Annika Olvik Moll. Can we please thank our retiring group finalists as they leave the ring? Congratulations to you all. We'd also like to acknowledge the trophy donated by Helen Head to the Best in Show winner and to the breeder of the Best in Show winner. And for the last time, our four best in show places are going to go around the ring. Please give them one last congratulations as they head round the ring. Best in show first, the Samoyed. Best in show second, the Miniature Poodle. Third, the English Springer Spaniel. And in fourth place, the Cairn Terrier. Please also thank our judge, Mrs Annika Altvitmo of Sweden.